beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed I wish I told you people to rehearse this song. Creator of the universe, what can't you do? What can't you do, Jesus? The name above every other name.
encourage you tonight believers whatever God tells you he can do it believe me believe me don't mind what you see when he's speaking to you just take your eyes away and with childlike foolishness say Lord I believe if God tells you I am lifting you on the wings of eagles say Lord I believe don't ask and say who is my uncle uh -uh. I believe I believe this ministry is a testimony of what God can do when he finds men who can dare to believe him Jesus we give you the praise in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah praise the Lord Let's honor our worship team. Come on. Absolutely. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look, guys, I am so proud of you. You do not imagine. I was talking to a Jimmy and said, look, very soon, we're going to start our own record label. Yeah. Absolutely. We'll make it happen. And by the Spirit of God, it will bless the nations of the world. And you have the opportunity to go around the nations of the world and be a blessing to the body in the name of Jesus. Let's honor them one more time. Thank you. Manasseh is with us today. Bless him. The bishop is around. Hallelujah. Bless you, sir. Thank you so much. I want to welcome everyone. We'll be very brief tonight. We're going to pray. I want to start tonight, um, I'm going to give us a very strong admonition which also doubles as an instruction. So please be ready to write. The Lord put this in my heart to share with us. It's been a wonderful year and God has been faithful. But let me remind you that the year is not over. Like Bishop David Oyedeko will say, he made the heavens and the earth in seven days. I don't care whether it's prophetic seven days or real seven days. My faith can agree on the one I want God to move on. Praise the Lord. Whether it's a thousand years, seven days, I know that even if it is in one day, it says, as soon as Zion travails, she shall put forth a child. He said, have you ever heard this proverb that a woman will give birth in one day? Be pregnant in one day and give birth in one day. That's God for you hallelujah i still believe that the best of the year for me is still to come i truly believe god has done things that has brought tears out of my eyes but i believe for myself that between now and december 31st i am yet to see the hand of god and so but i want to encourage us even as we begin to set the pace for 2018 if you will be there, you can write. <laughs> no, gone are the days where people, in, in a false show of humility, they say, we don't know whether we can see tomorrow is a lie. Don't, don't let any man um, bring that nonsense around your table. No, you can believe. There are scriptures that authenticate the quality of your life, the longevity of your life. And the problem is that we come from environments that sociologically condition us to defeat. Thank you, Jesus. I want to give you a few things that the Lord put in my heart to encourage us. Really, this is, this is what I'm here to do this night and then a few other things that god will grant us grace to do now most believers are not taught the relevance of a retreat most christians are not taught that a retreat is part and parcel of the spiritual growth process of a believer we teach fasting we teach prayer but very few believers have been taught as a corporate doctrine not just a time out away from people but a retreat that you end and begin seasons in your life in the presence of God it is risky to end and begin seasons in your life in the flesh the most spiritual aspect of your life should be when seasons are ending and when seasons are beginning because that's when Satan gets at people 
when the when when the seasons have been cleared up and you are moving it's difficult for satan to derail you are we together now so it is very very important every one of us must make sure that we use this one month that we're having and take out at least a few days for a quality retreat now there are different kinds of retreats we have our workers retreat as a ministry there are all kinds of retreats families have their retreats but this retreat i'm talking about is a retreat when you are exclusively alone with god not even husband and wife not even father and children no there are certain things god will never tell you in public there are certain things that you will only hear from god when you are alone with him are we together it is it is a very deep and simple spiritual mystery that guarantees victory many believers have not paid attention to it retreats very important end of year retreats very important you must take out time end of year retreat cannot be done in a few hours that is laziness you didn't have a retreat you just had a quiet time a retreat should be at least minimum two solid days you can't spend one day one day alone should be dedicated to thanksgiving is god speaking to us so every single one of us and those following online we must take out time to have personal retreats what are the activities that should happen in the retreats number one thanksgiving your end of year retreat is barren of god's power until you begin and lavishly communicate thanksgiving thanksgiving what we did here tonight is just a representation the same way you spend a night vigil praying and putting your needs you must thank god mention them one by one let me tell you i know this about god he never gets tired hearing people thank him lord thank you thank you you gave me tea thank you last year it was without blue band you added blue band this year and so you observed it you see that not lord you thank you for the food you gave me that's a careless thanksgiving father thank you last year it was tap water now you gave me bottled water thank you that means you are careful you are forgetting not his benefits when it comes to requests we are very meticulous lord give me one two three four then when it comes to thanksgiving we say lord even me i can't remember are you not god don't you know everything I, I just thank you for everything let's go to another prayer request and god says how selfish selfish when you thank god mention things one by one lord thank you i was on my way to kaduna and the car wanted to capsize you saved me thank you and god said ah, this happened january say lord i didn't forget you are too faithful for me to forget that event he said you remember this for me get ready for another dimension thanksgiving write it down thanksgiving we must take out quality time to thank him number two i'm teaching you how to maximize to set the pace to maximize your retreat what do you do during your personal retreat review your progress for the current year 2017 now that's what you do you sincerely honestly unashamedly review the year and i'll dwell here a bit to help us understand i want all of us to really understand these things the second thing you do at a retreat is to review the year and you don't just review the year carelessly you break your review into six different units write it down the first area is your spiritual life you review your spiritual life review your passion for god review the illumination of the word that you have accessed 
What do you know now that you did not know last year? What do you understand now that you did not understand last year? Review your character. Create a scale for it. Can I say I am improving? Not just in the knowledge of God. Am I useful to society? Am I becoming a leader? Am I becoming a person of character? So your spiritual life is the first area that you have to review. Let me tell you something about retreats. You must be honest. You see why you have to be alone? Excuse me. You must be honest. You must be unashamed. You must be very sincere before God. Number two, mental development and your capacity. You review that area. Did I cooperate with the word of God to develop my mind? Did I acquire useful informations that will set me on the cutting edge of relevance? Did I just pray and fast and build my life spiritually and allowed my mind and my relevance with my sociological environment to die? Are we together now? Yes, it matters that we not only grow spiritually, but we sustain the ability to be useful. We must be able to communicate the life of Christ to our environment. So you review it. What books did I read? What do I know about leadership? Did I learn anything? Did I build my mind? What do I know about mindsets? Am I still carrying my village in my head, moving around with it? Am I still carrying the attributes that keep me poor and a failure? Am I still carrying the attributes that make good things to live my life? Is God helping us? Number three, review how much you have taken care of your body, your health. In a retreat, yes sir. That's the best place so that you can easily ask for forgiveness when? Because the only person you really have offended is God. This body belongs to him. For some of us, 2017 has been a useful year spiritually and a careless one health-wise. Is that true? Review. Oh, this year, Lord, I apologize. I ate anyhow. I did all kinds of things. Anyhow, destroyed my body. Why do you make these reviews? Because you need this body to last very long. Are we together? Gone are the days when people don't talk about this in church and they tell people the most important thing is your spiritual life. And you see someone of 32 looking like 50. They ask him how old are you? He said, I will be 33 next year. Say, so why are you looking at his condition make crayfish bed? No, you are not a crayfish. You are created in the image and the likeness of God. Some of those sayings, we must start getting them out of the body of Christ. They look very nice, but these are the things that authorize Satan to destroy our lives. Hallelujah. Your health. And some of us, it is not even poverty. It's carelessness. Write that word down. This is a word that you should look at very carefully during your retreat. Many people's lives are destroyed including their health because of one word carelessness unattentiveness to details hallelujah number four review your assignment the reason for which god brought you review your purpose your kingdom service these are things that you review at a time of retreat. Lord, I look at the compass of my destiny. Did I make progress this year? Can I say from prophecy to manifestation, I have moved forward. You see, this assignment and purpose thing, you, you, you hardly even hear it again. People don't talk about it. It says, lo, I come as it is written of me in the volume of the book to do your will. The reason why many people have time to waste their life is because they are not occupied with purpose. If purpose does not occupy you, anybody can call you any day and say, are you free, sir? Yes, come and follow me somewhere. God designed your time to be well invested fulfilling your assignment. This idleness that our generation has is because we are not occupied in purpose. And then the recent... 
um, I would say trick of the devil is to make people busy but not moving forward motions like sitting on a rocking chair the chair is rocking consistently but you are not making progress oftentimes Jesus would retreat and look okay I must be here I must be there your assignment your purpose I don't know my purpose but you can look at your service in the house of God use that as a template what was your level of commitment what was your level of diligence are we together very important this is what I do during my retreats number four the fourth area number what number five I beg your pardon your finance write it down your finances you have to flog it out in the secret place are we together now you've looked at your spiritual life mental transformation your body your health is that true and then your assignment then your finances we're very unapologetic about the usefulness of financial resources both in the quality of our lives and kingdom advance i'm not one of those pretentious people that would downplay the role of financial resources in helping an individual live a useful life i've shared it again and again with us that living to seek money all your life is a cost it's not just bad it's a cost it's one of the most distracting strategies of satan when a man spends all your life looking for money it's a cost Nobody was ever designed to do that. What time then do you have in building? This chase for money has made us to leave our children to the hands of Satan. Has made us to leave our purpose. There are people called as prophets and apostles, but they only realize one week to their death. They spent their whole life chasing money and they never find it. Please let me say it again and again. Do not ever plan to continue pursuing money all your life. There is an exact time where God should help you put together financial resources that afford you the opportunity to serve God so that you can turn and focus on the more useful things. Making financial pursuit priority in your life forever is a cause. It may be within the time you are seeking, that's all right. So this is very important. Review. Because for some of us, our whole lives is built around money, money, and we never get it. You talk two minutes, money, everything, money. You say Jesus, the person replies back with money. Money, money, every time. You have to review. Is that true? Was I able to engage the keys that bring for wealth and abundance this year? Or I just had it and it didn't work? You will easily know whether you engage it by the results you got. Finance is one area where your disobedience shows immediately. Immediately. So you must be sincere. This year, God gave me one million naira. God gave me hundred thousand naira. What did I do with it? I made a mistake. I gave 100,000 Naira to 419ers. You don't jump that. What is the lesson that I have to learn there? Is that true? God gave me 200,000. I bought a shoe and I bought a shirt that is not yet my level to prove a point to people who are not interested. Oh Lord, forgive me. Don't say it's all right. Ask for forgiveness because that is sin. Is that true? When God gives you resources and you waste it, if nobody has told you it is sin, believe me. Lord, I gave you offering of 1010 10 Naira. I gave you offering of 2020 20 Naira. But my average dinner was 2000 Naira. It's a sign that you are not a serious believer. I know you think, I'm not talking about money. You know that God has helped us. But it's important. These are some of the things that you do during your retreat. A measure of your passion for the house of God. And that includes with your resources. All this 10, 10 naira giving. You know, most times we lie to ourselves that it doesn't matter. 
the amount does not matter are we not bible students he that soweth sparingly what is sparingly small scanty shall reap but he shall reap scanty that's why you get one testimony you form most correct you are reaping but he that soweth bountifully lavishly extravagantly he said he will reap the bible said that scriptures cannot be broken so don't say that it does not matter it could be a time for you i remember it was in one of my retreats honestly speaking that the lord challenged me on this the level of giving was far less than the level of god's blessing on my life and the lord rebuked me and i made up my mind and i made a vow there is a minimum amount i will never give as offering again forever till jesus comes yes it's true it's true it's true so review it what do you understand about finances review it if all you know about finances is business and job is better you have to sit down and flog that area because neither of them in themselves will give you money number six relationships the sixth area that you will look at in your retreat is your relationships marital relationships career relationships business relationships destiny relationships some of us almost wasted our year today because of the presence of bad and useless associations associations that should have nothing nothing to do with our lives is all this uh, is our tribe is our church is our this is that true the bible says he that works with the wise will be wise but it says the companion of fools will be destroyed relationships it matters review them review them who did you give access to this year whose presence destroyed your productivity who did you give access to this year that destroyed your potential for more results who should you have given access to this year that would have improved your life some of you your relationship here you even need to go back and check with the holy spirit what degree of access did you give him relationships now when you review these six areas let me be honest with you your entire life revolves around these six areas your spiritual life your mental development your health and physical well-being is that true your assignment your career whatever it is your financial resources and your relationships there is no man that will ever be a failure if he excels in this area usually what i do is that i scale all six areas and look at the best performing area and the worst performing area and i must answer why i won't just say i will improve why why was this the best and why was this the worst if your relationships for inside for instance was the worst this year what don't i know about friendship what have i not learned maybe i'm neglecting honor maybe i'm not valuable enough maybe i'm too much of a talkative maybe i'm not somebody who can be committed secret maybe i'm somebody who is not friendly maybe i'm someone who is jealous lord help me you write it down are you seeing how people grow in retreat you will never come out of that experience the same no sir people jump into the new year and laugh and fast for 10 days or 21 days and become the same old them again and you see the bible says you never put new wine in an old wine skin if your wine skin is old nothing new will ever come you will have to replace that wine skin like a snake molting shedding off the old skin so that there can be room for expansion he said go and borrow vessels borrow the wine skin borrow not a few and the more the wine skin the more capacity for the anointing to function is that true you must take out time so this is the second thing you do the first thing let's review thanksgiving thanksgiving 
then the second thing you do is a review of the year i gave you six aspects of your review the third thing is that you must plan for 2018 plan for 2018 i'll tell you how to plan shortly please write this it's very important plan for 2018 it's amazing how many people don't plan they think just because they are writing what they would do they think that's planning that's not planning many times those things are just wishes because at the end of the year less than one percent of them ever happen that's not a goal how do you plan set clear goals in these six areas we just reviewed set clear goals with scriptural backings in each of them I am convinced that if you set a goal in any of these six areas and it doesn't have a scriptural backing it will not come to pass because there is no basis for committing God remember your success is based on your partnership you are not going to plan alone for by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail you must plan and add a scriptural backing that means a spiritual basis for committing God in those areas and then you must add time targets to them every day is not conducive for everything no sir when you buy a product if we pick up this bottle of water you will see there's a little inscription there the manufacturing date and then they write something best before in other words to get the best of this pro this product it should be consumed within this time range putting time target to your goals puts a healthy pressure on you to be able to achieve them the reason why i believe that a lot of us have defaulted on our goals is because there is no time allocation so we make it look like every day is conducive no sir if you build a house at 70 years it's not a testimony if you finish school at 60 years it's not a testimony is that true if a woman gives birth to her first child at 60 years it's an unusual testimony it's because it's not supposed to be so is that true if god blesses you at 80 years who are you going to leave it for you will be angry and be frustrated so there are things that we must trust god to help us fast track in our life say amen and let me come to the gentleman and just talk to us a little please plan turn to any brother seated near you and say brother plan just leave the sisters in one minute say brother plan listen spiritual people spiritual people are some of the poorest planners we have especially in this country we don't plan for our greatness we just hope and wish and pray bishop oyedeko said praying without planning is playing without knowing you have to be like nehemiah with one hand you are building but with another hand you are holding the sword both hands cannot hold the sword one hand is holding the sword and another hand is building it says every house is built by some man but god is the builder of all that some man must build the horse is prepared for battle but safety is of the lord but it does not stop you from preparing the horse are we together now i expect every gentleman here to start planning married or not sit down and plan here's what scripture says when i was a child i thought like a child correct i understood like a child i acted like a child it says now that i am a man i lay aside these childish things some of you that's what will happen in your retreat you have to sit down and tell yourself this childishness in my life must go forever comma this foolishness in my life must go forever this stupidity in my life must go forever somehow we have this belief that because god is able without our engaging him through the application of the wisdom of god things will just happen just like that 
We are tired of irresponsible fathers. We are tired of irresponsible gentlemen. We are tired of nuisances to society. A gentleman who should be capable of feeding and taking care of his siblings and taking care of a generation is still depending on his old and aged parents. Blasting in tongues but depending there. It should not be. It should not be. There is an honor that comes when certain things are in place in your life. Is that true? I'm speaking to everybody, but I'm speaking especially to our gentlemen. Please, let's go back to God and plan. This rat race of visiting everybody. Today you are here. Tomorrow you are there. My brother, what are you doing with your life? You say it is well. No, it's not well. You sit down and plan. What are you doing with your life? Oh, I want to marry Apostle. Wonderful. And eat what? Show me the blueprint of, of the, not the timetable of your cooking, the, the capability to be able to fend and take care of the family. Especially, do you know, because in Africa, let's be very honest, if I handpick everybody here, almost everybody here has at least four or five people depending to eat from him. Is that true? Leave the ladies. Gentlemen, I'm talking to you. I'm coming to the ladies. Pick anybody at random. There is one neighbor, one, one cousin you know, one relative that you didn't even know you are related to that needs you to feed. So gone are the days where you say, I have enough for myself. No. You must flog it out. Plan. 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 I will take the month of January to study only on finances. Even if they give you a message on rapture, you say, I'm born again. I have a goal. I'm studying on finances. I'm spending the month of February to study on faith. On faith. I'm studying the month of, uh, the month of March to study on the anointing. I'm studying the month of uh, June or April or whatever to study on my giftings and potentials. I'm spending the month of July to study on ministry or my assignment. That's how we grow. You don't get up every day and open to any part of scripture and just read and convince yourself that you are growing. You must plan. Are we together? By the grace of God, there, there is almost a message concerning every major area of your life. Go to the media stand. There are teachings. The media department can help you compartmentalize the teachings. If it is success, if it's your spiritual growth, character development, you know, salvation, etc. Whatever it is. There are teachings and they are all free. Camp with them. You must plan. Number four. The fourth thing that I want us to do by the grace of God is that all of us as a family of faith, individually, we are going to be studying the book of Proverbs. Write it down. We are going to be studying the book of Proverbs. All the 31 chapters. Study, not read. There's a difference between studying and reading. You can take two, two chapters and finish it in 15 days. You didn't study, you read. You glanced through. Let's use this break period to extensively study the book of Proverbs. Go online. There are all kinds of commentaries that have been done on that book. Study carefully. Don't read to finish. Read to understand. The book of Proverbs. The Lord put this in my heart. We're studying. The fifth admonition which comes as an instruction is that every one of us as much as God has granted us the understanding have a sacrificial seed wrapped with expectation this is between you and God a sacrifice is not a seed a sacrifice is bread he said cast your bread upon the water he gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater but there are times he will challenge you to give both the bread and the seed a sacrificial seed 
I'm already doing mine and I'm doing it again and again. It's a principle I have practiced for many years that at the end of the year into the next year, they, I, will, I will have to commit to something that cost me, both to God and to the ministry. Every year without fail, I do this. I'm not talking of uh, 10 naira, 20 naira, something that even you, you will stand and say, Lord, I give you thanks between you and God. Why are you doing that? You are engaging the mystery of sacrifice and securing the year coming. Now please don't do it if you don't have the revelation. This has nothing to do with trying to manipulate money. And this is a mistake that men of God make. When it comes to things like seeds and sacrifice, you see them expressing a lot of desperation. I, I always say this, every man of God's success is not based on the giving of members. It is based on his own obedience to the principles of the kingdom. Koinonia will only prosper to the degree to which you are complying with the precepts of the kingdom. Are we together? These five things, I promise you that when you do them, you will be ready for an amazing 2018. Number one, thanksgiving. Number two, review. That number two for me is one of the most important. You have to review. Don't just wait and say, ah, apostle, send us the prophetic word for next year. My body is shaking. I need to know what is the prophetic word. This is how a lot of people keep recycling carelessness again after again. And, 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 and then again and again, and they find out that the year remains the same. Different words coming, but there's no progress in our lives. So go back, get a notebook. Don't just get a little piece of paper. It's a sign that you are not serious with your own destiny. Get a notebook and sit down and write these things out. Come up by the Spirit. One of the things I can guarantee you that will happen in your silence is that the Holy Spirit will speak to you. He will correct you. He will applaud you. He will rebuke you. He will encourage you. He will challenge you. Let the chastening of the Lord not be something that you resent. Whatever happens in that secret place, embrace it as a refiner's fire. It is going to be the key to your next level. Is that true? Praise God. So you do this. This is my first encouragement for us tonight. These five things. The Lord put it in my heart and I felt to share with us to help us maximize our time. Proverbs chapter 4. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We're reading the first 10 verses. Proverbs chapter 4. Just to encourage us and then we'll pray. Proverbs chapter 4. Is it projected? Okay. Hear ye children the instructions of a father and attend to no understanding for I give you good doctrine forsake ye not my law Solomon is teaching us here for I was my father's son tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother he taught me also and said unto me let thy heart retain my words keep my commandments and leave verse 5 get wisdom get understanding forget it not neither decline from the words of my mouth verse 6 forsake her not who is the heart wisdom understanding Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Take note. The benefits of embracing wisdom and understanding. She shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Seven says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Verse eight says, exalt her, and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. Who will bring you? Wisdom and understanding, not just wisdom. Wisdom and understanding will bring you to honor when thou dost embrace her. We are reading to verse 10, verse 9. 
she shall give unto thy head an ornament of grace a crown of glory shall she deliver unto you verse 10 hear O my son and receive my sayings and the years of thy life shall be many from preservation to honor to longevity wisdom and understanding wisdom is the capacity to understand the mind of Christ wisdom is the ability to communicate the scriptural solution concerning every issue of life the scriptural solution to every issue of life is called wisdom you are wise to the degree to which you comprehend the ability to profess scriptural solution there are cultural solutions to life's problems there are occultic solutions to life problems there are emotional solutions to life's problems none of them in themselves are able to provide lasting solutions but the wisdom of god the wisdom of god i have pursued the wisdom of god with my life because when i was exposed to my own folly and the fact that i am so limited and the consequences of foolishness the bible says he that works with the wise shall be wise himself but he said just being the companion of a fool your destruction is guaranteed if as a companion of a fool you are destroyed then what happens to the fool just being a friend to a foolish man allowing his foolish decisions to influence you it guarantees doom for you that means every fool has no hope foolishness is bankruptcy of the knowledge of god's principles it's not just acting foolishly the foolish action is a product of bankruptcy in your spirit and in your mind I like us to carefully examine the decisions in our lives i want us to carefully examine the things that we do the degree to which you have succeeded is a show of how you have manifested the wisdom of god every time results are not produced in your life is because there was a defaulting in the wisdom of god it's an uncomfortable truth but it's the secret to rising and pressing for wisdom i am ever ready to be shown by God the areas in my life where I am bankrupt of the wisdom of God it doesn't embarrass me I want to know I search for it like one who is looking for treasure if you do not contend for wisdom your life will be an unending circle of pain an unending circle of regrets an unending circle of many things most of us look at our lives this year and we can see several points in our lives where foolishness veered us off the path of glory and brought us into a lot of pain some of us lost destiny help us some of us lost the gift of men is that true some of us lost opportunities some of us lost access several things no wisdom some of us this year we approached our parents wrongly and right now there is a divide between us and our parents lack of wisdom some of us had zeal with no knowledge and it brought a lot of trouble to our businesses a lot of trouble to our ministries wisdom is very important the bible says it is the principal thing and you see, the Bible says, I commend you to the word of God. It says it's able to make you wise. The word of God makes men wise. Just by focusing your attention on the word of God and imbibing the principles 
the modus operandi of the kingdom it makes you wise the word of god teaches you how to relate with difficult people the word of god teaches you how to speak and when to speak so that you don't get into trouble the word of god teaches you how to respond to unbelievers many of us come from families where there is a mixture of people who are both of the faith and not of the faith wisdom teaches you how to communicate wisdom teaches you that when you are angry be silent because every time you speak you will speak in the flesh there are many people who just obeying this principle would have saved them businesses worth millions of naira they uttered words that they are still paying for it today are we together our challenges dr mike modok will say there is no money problem anywhere and i agree with him most of our challenges because you see we are victims of our understanding and most of the things we have executed in our lives are reflections of the limitations of our knowledge our wisdom our understanding guess what the bible says it says true wisdom a house is built then it says by understanding it is established the firmness of that house is a product of understanding it says true knowledge is a house filled with every pleasurable thing we must make up our minds that we are going to access the word of God not just as an instrument to heal us of the guilt of um, spirituality I would say for many people our study of the word is just to so that the devil does not plant any seed in us that we are backsliding but we are not learning anything this is the greatest book that will help your career and your business this is the greatest book that will help your marriage this is the greatest book the sufferings in our world today is because we have ignored the truths that are here we have read it like a religious book we have read it to preach we have read it to to carry out bible studies and prayer sessions but we have not read it for the purpose of accessing wisdom for the way of the lord is the way of wisdom choose the way of the Lord. listen there is no age you get to in life that guarantees that all your decisions will be flawlessly accurate this is the book that coordinates our success there is no educational height you get to that guarantees that your decision making process will be accurate even if you study psychology it is not enough to give you all the parameters that are needed in themselves to make wise decisions i have lost confidence in myself outside of the world it says thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path in this wicked world listen this ministry by the grace of God was built on this word. I have meticulously built my life on this word. I don't trust any other thing that is not this word. I bring you a proposition tonight as we round up this year. I want you to return to a place where you hold an unquenchable hunger and value for the word. Many of us pray but our lives are bankrupt of wisdom our decisions show the absence of the influence of the word it's very clear that we are not being governed by the word i can know how much you have imbibed the word by the excellency and the quality of your communication i'm not talking of linguistic excellence i'm talking of the wisdom that flows from your words i see your behavior I see how you disappoint your enemy's expectations and I know you have stayed with the world. When you become a victim of people's expectations, wait and see. He's going to shout at this person. Ah, you come and shout. Ah, you have given yourself cheap to life. The word of God is not coordinating you. Jesus disappointed the expectations of the people many times for instance when they brought to him the woman who was caught in adultery they expected he was going to rant because they were talking about the word of god you know every time satan wants to challenge you he uses scripture moses said this and jesus kept quiet wisdom for there is a time to speak 
and there is a time to be silent there are times where your loudest communication is in your silence your silence will answer more than any word for instance when responding to your critic your critic already knows the truth don't try to explain it's a waste of time you don't respond to critics by verbal communication you respond to critics by consistency consistency of your results is that true when I look at our lives and I see our lives surrounded by pride and arrogance it is because we have not seen the deception of pride the deception of pride is like a man climbing a ladder and you take the ladder away that's exactly what pride does I love the Word of God I stopped reading my Bible to finish it I stopped reading my Bible to crime scriptures I found out that it was truly a roadmap in this darkness darkness where there is deception how many of you have followed people's advices and their advices crashed you not because they were bad people they were just humans they advise you to beat your wife if she goes wrong see I tried it on my own wife look at how she's behaving now you tried it on your own wife and that's when you, you your prayer stopped being answered that's the first thing that started happening to you and many other bad things happened to you I can look at your life and know how much the Word of God has prevailed by the quality of the results that you produce you see let me tell you something if I look at your life and I see you are dirty and tattered as simple as neatness I know you don't have respect for the Word of God if the Word of God can purge your spirit then your life will reflect it you cannot be growing in the world and you are dirty unkept looking like a thief all the time and say it does not matter no sir no sir the word of god will make you to buy an iron because it will teach you that there is a way you appear before kings there is a way kings behave and the bible tells you that you have been made according to revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 we have been made unto god a kingdom of kings and priests so you speak like a king you act like a king is that true it is the word of God that is the antidote to these conflicts that our cultures create in our heads. Christian versus Hausa, Christian versus Yoruba, Christian versus Igbo. You don't know which one to embrace and which one to leave. I propose to you a culture that is above and superior to every other one. That any part of your culture that does not subscribe to the word of God, eject it immediately. The kingdom is a culture most of us our lives have been destroyed because of our our unfortunate loyalty to cultural tenants that are completely anti-christ so although uh, we are attempting again and again to be spiritual but the the thinkings that we have imbibed from culture continue to fight god in our lives i have no loyalty to anything that is not of God this is it this is my new culture scripture tells me that I've been called out of every tribe I'm not saying culture is bad in itself but trust me there are demonic and satanic areas there are certain aspects of cultures that are not seen in themselves but I tell you they are weights a weight is something that can provide an impedance it can stop your movement it says my yoke is easy and my burden is light so when you are carrying a weight that is destroying your life in our place we don't do this in our place women cannot talk who is this woman preaching i can't listen to her because in our which your place who invented it oh god is speaking i will listen in our place young people don't talk to old people even respectfully even under the anointing are you seeing that now it is important that we recalibrate our minds so that we begin to view life from the perspective of the kingdom they drove children from coming to jesus something about their culture taught them that and jesus said, ah, let the little children come to me 
and do not forbid them he said for for such that means these children roaming around are teaching you a lesson you are not learning that until you become like one of these not childish but childlike very malleable in your faith and understanding he says the kingdom is for such are you getting blessed tonight get wisdom get understanding make a conscious decision that in the name of the Lord Jesus although I was born in so 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 place I was born under so 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 condition by the grace of God my children will not live under that kind of condition the Lord by his spirit will lift me it's not about Nazareth it's not about where you come from it's about your ability to walk with the Word of God and bring that transformation hallelujah by the grace of God I have made it a personal commitment as a minister that I will never create seditions or favoritism based on geographic factors never never you will never see me do that I love my people wonderful people love my region where I come from but by the grace of God, I've traveled to every one of the regions of this nation and they love me unreservedly because I do not and will never, never try to create any sense of superiority of one culture above another. I love everyone. The Bible says there is neither male nor female, neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free. We're all in Christ. So I cannot see I can say I K is Igbo and say um, Pastor Alpha is from Kogi State, Promise is from Delta, and I say you are my person. Be careful. Those are the kinds of mindsets that rob us because your destiny helper will come as directed. It may not be from your place. Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible does not record that he was part of the disciples of Jesus. How about Simon of Cyrene? The people who played very major roles in the life of Jesus. Jesus was rejected by his own people. They ran away. Anna the prophetess. Simeon in the temple. Joseph of Arimathea. Look at the strange people who came and attended to him. Wisdom. There are ministries that have crashed into pieces because of lack of wisdom. They make it look like if you are this tribe, you are not welcome. If you are that tribe, you are not welcome. We must be careful because we are dealing with a global society. Part of the principles you learn when you study global leadership is that you must concentrate on the points of similarity. Concentrate on the points of similarity. Nobody will be comfortable in an atmosphere where their core values are being insulted simply because you are trying to demonstrate the superiority of another culture. So we unify ourselves as believers with one common culture. It's called the kingdom. The kingdom is God's culture where we allow the influence and the reign of Christ to permeate our lives regardless of our geographic differences ah. Elohim Adonai Thy kingdom come Thy will be done Elohim Adonai Thy kingdom come Thy will be done Elohim Adonai It is the Bible that teaches us how to be wise financially. It says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. So when you see a young man spending as if he would not marry, you see that? Living a fake and a foolish life. That's a selfish man because he's not thinking about his children and his children's children. The Bible says it. 
the Bible says there is he that scattereth. Hear the wisdom of God. There is he that scattereth and increaseth. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. That means there is a relationship between greed and lack. The Bible establishes it. So when there is lack in your life, you check and you see that there is scripture is fulfilled in your life. The Bible talks about tithing. That there is a relationship between the opening of your heavens and your tithing. Regardless of whatever opinions are available, scripture cannot be broken. It is by these two immutable things. God swore his word will not be broken. Heaven and earth will pass away, but brothers and sisters, men and their philosophies and their pride and their arrogance, nations and kingdoms will rise and fall. But the word of God remains consistent. One of the greatest fears, if I would say in my life, is to find out that at the end of my life, I believe they lie. I wasted my time following a man, following a philosophy, and then at the end, he would tell me, I'm sorry, me too, I'm as confused as you. I choose the word of God that liveth and abideth forever. This ministry is a tithing ministry. I'm a tithing person. There is no devil and no doctrine that will ever stop us. That's why there is no amount of recession. I say it with all humility. By the grace of God Almighty that is capable of limiting me as a person and limiting the work of God. For he said, I will build my church. And if you allow me to build it, I will build it in such a manner that the gates of hell will not prevail. This is the wisdom of God. I have learned from the wisdom of God that as a man of God, your assignment is to lift up Jesus, not yourself. This is the secret to crowd. You lift up yourself, you pay for it. He says, and I, if I be lifted, the reward for lifting me is mysteriously. I will draw all men, not some men, not some territories. When I found this, I said, Lord, I have no business building any empire. It is about Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords thank god for the honor but i'm so happy to let you know that the one who really deserves all the glory and all the honor is jesus the head of the church the builder of koinonia it came from the word i'm showing you things from the word i have found out in the word of god that when you honor the body of christ there are dimensions you enter it is, it is the word of God that gave me that wisdom. So I can insult a man because I do not like something about him. Yet he's carrying an anointing that can help me. It is for this cause many are weak. For this cause many are sick. For this cause many do sleep. There are many people who would have cheaply received miracles. But the vessels that carry the anointing are not appealing to them. The scripture says there is a treasure in earthen vessel. He didn't tell you the vessel is golden. He said the vessel is earthen. So he can be angry like Elijah or temperous like Moses. They still are anointed. When I found out I don't have any problem with any man of God. You never hear me open my mouth and tear down a man and his ministry because I believe that there is always something I can learn. Even if I cannot learn spirituality, I can learn excellence. I can learn leadership. When you search for Jesus everywhere, you will find him. Hmm. I learned from this scripture that as a man, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So I stop wasting my time packaging a reality that is not here. Gone are the days where people try to buy suit, buy shoe with empty understanding and then their minds reduce their lives back. Have you seen territories like that? They try to do physical things. They have not educated the people in that environment. Then they make tap. In six months, they spoil the tap to look like the mindsets of those living in that environment. No sensitization. So I learned that the key to my lifting is not buying clothes, buying shoes, buying all these things to prove a point that I can wait with the Holy Spirit to reconstruct my understanding and that inevitably the things I so admire will helplessly run towards me. Oh my God, and how, how true. This is one of the truest revelations I know in scripture. The supernatural power of the transformed mind and its ability to effortlessly draw to your life 
the realities that are consistent with your understanding it is true are we together the wisdom of God tells you there is hope for a tree even it be cut short in our society where we are we are more than happy to conclude on people you look at someone and say this guy used to be an arm robber there's no hope for him but when you study the word of God the Bible is full of people that God transformed their lives overnight and my Bible says that rejected stone ha! that rejected stone I'm speaking to someone in your family and all the nonsense and rubbish that they say about people there are people who started this year with their pride of spirituality and right now they are not they are almost not even born again because their pride humbled them they maintain their spiritual lives by themselves but there are people who started this year saying Lord if you are looking for any vessel can you use this drunkard and God said that's all I want come and right now as I speak to you they are in various stages around the world setting a place the kingdom of darkness because he uses the foolish things when you understand this you will never run your mouth at anybody and conclude on people you don't see a woman who is frying a car and look and say oh dear poor woman because God can pick someone you see the word of God makes men wise the way we speak sometimes shows that we have not read scripture whether it is a poor man a rich man I will hug you and greet you. I won't say you, you are this. No, no, no. Of course, I will give you honor. Because God, I have seen in my little life how God has transformed people overnight and made princes to be servants and servants to become princes. If the Baba of Joseph knew he was barbing the prime minister, he would have begged him and said, Sir, don't forget me, you. There were people of Basanjo lifted simply because they dared to advise him while he was in prison. When he came out, he sent for them, created one committee and dropped them there. He said, quit before I change the committee. And he said it very openly, not anything in the hiding. I brought this person here because he was there for me. Wisdom. Wisdom teaches you to be there for people at their worst areas because they will never forget you. People will forget you when they, if, if, if I hold a banquet for plenty people, you hold that banquet as a king, so you forget everybody. But when someone comes to you in the cave of Adulam, you say, I will never forget you. Everybody ran away from me, but you stood there. One of the quickest way to be rich is find somebody rising. Find a vision rising. Be part of it with all diligence. That's a free ride to the wealthy place. I guarantee you. Some of our parents today know people that would have changed their life in a heartbeat. They are crying for rent. Whereas somebody that they would have helped with 50 naira 20 years ago would give them an estate today. The word of God making us wise. Making us wise. Making us wise. Making us wise. Hold your Bible in one minute. And I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, there is, there is wisdom in this scripture. There is wisdom in this scripture. There is wisdom in this scripture. I'm tired of foolishness in my life. Lord, I come to terms with the fact that my decisions are obviously showing a bankruptcy of the word of God. The quality of my decisions are a revelation that the wisdom of God is not at work in my life. The quality of my decisions, the quality of my results are questioning the efficacy of the word of God in my life. Are you praying? I'm not asking you whether you have been faithful with Bible study. I'm not asking you whether you have been faithful with your, your devotion or whatever it is. I am asking you, have you allowed the wisdom of God to influence your understanding? Do you live your life trading the mysteries of the kingdom? Or do you live your life guessing and hoping that at a point in your life things will change? It's risky to run your life by your own your own formula hallelujah sit down the wisdom of God come the wisdom of God teaches us how to relate with people is that true 
when when you study the wisdom of God the Word of God you will know that whoever wants friends will not sit down and say call me text me be my friend that friendship is a harvest you have to sow the seed so if I sit down and I find out that I love God but there are no friends as a lady nobody likes me as a guy nobody likes me the secret is that something about your life is creating an environment that is pungent to friendship see that when you lack helpers in your life the Bible gives you a prescription when you lack helpers in your life I can tell you immediately there are things you are not doing among them there is no prophecy on your life because destiny helpers don't come on their own it is one aspect of your life that it is pure prophecy that calls them are we learning how about fear living in fear there are many of us we have used our words to program wars ladies ah, it is not for us we are not us we are the we are the um uh, what they call that thing we are the outcasts we are the ones who our parents cannot this leave it to these people and the bible says do not say before an angel i made a mistake we have programmed nonsense and rubbish a name god did not call you you have allowed yourself to be called it again and again you called yourself ugly there is nowhere in scripture where you are called ugly you called yourself irresponsible the word of god does not call you that way open my eyes help me believe i am what you say hallelujah so French, the bible says cast not away your confidence confidence is not pride uh -uh. confidence is psychological stability that is on the strength of the truth you have found in scripture that's confidence stability that is based on the truth of god's word if you tell me apostle i i was passing across a shrine and i heard them talking about you that they will kill you tomorrow i'm going to sleep this night i won't wake up and do any special prayer through the night of god and it can't be joy it's a joke if you know the mysteries that keep this man standing yeah, yeah. Uh -uh. you surround yourself with mysteries like chariots when the spirit of death knocks on your door three scriptures come out like like fire i shall not die but live and declare the works of the lord number two honor your father and your mother that your days may be long and that it shall be well with you number three i set before you life and death blessing and cursing i advise you and i chose it do you fight a man outside his will even God stands in the door of your heart and knocks. Why wouldn't Satan knock? Why wouldn't death knock? If God is knocking to enter. I don't know about you. The Bible says a man who has no control over his spirit is like a city without war. Anything that must enter my life. If God knocks to enter, nothing will enter on his own. It's my revelation. So when men say there is a casting down, they allowed it somewhere. For me, when it knocks, I say, get back. For me, there is a lifting up. See, I'm not just entertaining you. I'm showing you how the word of God makes a man wise. It constructs your understanding. The Bible says he daily loads me with benefit. I expect favor every day. Recycled after 24 hours. It's not because I'm a preacher. I expect it. I found it. I found thy word and I ate it. It was a joy and a rejoicing. The word was not written for preachers, brothers and sisters. It was written for those who can believe. My mother started learning these principles. And you would find that people would start calling. Take a bag of rice. Give your mother. Take this. Give your mother. Working for her. She's not a preacher. And it's not because she's my mother. It works for anybody. 
he said declare ye that he might be justified i will never say i am a failure no sir no sir no sir no sir just because there is no food in your room most believers will come guide this life self aluta continua victoria escata is a, a cause you are recite you are enchanting is the same thing as being given a charm in a herbalist shrine and you read it that's what we have been doing you come in and you see lack and insufficiency you declare while i look not at the things that are unseen but the things that are seen for the things that are seen are temporal subject to change but the things that are unseen i know that one day i will feed nations come on now you are going through times in your life you don't understand what is happening you don't give room to depression though he slay me yet will i trust him i know my redeemer lives Bible said Job did not cost God. The way we act is a revelation as to whether the word of God has worked in us. You go back and you meet friends. Ah, a mega, and then they say one kind of very devilish, poisonous, and vulgar word. You call a human being a dog, you call a human being, it used to be a joke, but now that you have the revelation. You lovingly say, no, I'm not a dog. I know exactly dogs in scripture are used to communicate Gentiles and people who are at the basest levels of life. I will not confess that. The Bible says he has made me a king and a priest. I remember when I was in secondary school, there's something they call Yabi. You know it. Where two people will sit down and look for very nasty expressions. Very vulgar descriptions of themselves the goal is for it to be funny so somebody usually there are a group of people who are like the referees i will say my own you'll be angry and say your own and then you know that's why people were not doing well notice people who enter js1 and by the time they finish writing exams they come out the only thing they come out with is a good certificate common sense gone health gone they are sick they have troubles has not given me the spirit of fear the bible says i shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day in my world there's nothing like ember months he daily loads this is the day the lord has made it is the lord and satan the lord alone made that day satan too was waiting for god to make the day it was god that made the day i rejoice in it and i am glad you will never see me frowning my face and you ask me why. I said, Kai, this word, Nigeria. I said, no. He said, for with joy shall I draw. I've taught you this. Frustrate Satan by remaining joyful. He said, rejoice in the Lord, not in your results. If you rejoice in your results, the day you don't see it, you will not rejoice again. If you rejoice in your CGPA, your job, your new employment, I rejoice in the Lord eyes are on him regardless of the results my eyes are on him you pick a medical report and he looks at you he says the, the medical report says you have all kinds of lumps and all kinds of growth and the devil says that's it oh. in case you don't know the name is cancer it's just that it's forming come keep watching and you sit down and go online signs of cancer they say it starts like lumps hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you come and meet a maker and then he will confirm it to you he says it's true Go and drop that report and say lord if i die who will dance you are reducing the number of people who will praise you ask hezekiah isaiah went to him in chapter 38 and said hezekiah set your house in order hezekiah said nonsense i respect you you're a prophet of god but leave me and god shut the door hezekiah said god what did i hear you say remember your temple when you talk about the temple god listens oh lord your house oh and he said no 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 please isaiah go back go back go back i think it was a prayer department i was i was um Yes, on Tuesday, I was rounding up their session with them and I told them something. I said, as a worker in this ministry, there are benefits that should be yours. They are not, they are not privileges, they are rights. As a worker, 
there are certain things that should be yours the bible said a worker is worthy the word worthy there is deserving of his wages not just a worker in koinonia a worker in the house of god the closest simile to wages is salary that means that there should be something that leaves heaven for me you have gotten your salary for being a civil servant of Nigeria. Have you gotten your salary for being a worker in the house of God? Is God speaking to you? The way I speak, the way I act, the way I understand is a revelation. When you look at your child and beat your child and kick your child and say you are you are an idiot, you are a stupid child, I don't know why you and your foolish mother, you are revealing something. The kicking is a revelation. It's a revelation that number one, you don't know that children come from God. Number two, you do not know that fatherhood is an office recognized in the realm of the spirit. There is a priesthood office that fatherhood has. The mother of Jabez was angry. She didn't know that motherhood is an office. And out of her anger, she named her child Jabez. Every time Jabez was to be good, that office cried in the realm of the spirit. And one day Jabez was angry and said, no, I can't continue like this. I can tell you more than half of Africans are carrying all kinds of tragedies that the office of father and mother provided out of anger. Your father looks at you and just says, look, it will not be well with you just because that time you were in the world and you stole his shoe or you stole a goat and went to go and sell it and he looked at you and in anger, he cost you. He said, this is how you will be like a goat all through your life. And you will think it's a joke until you find out you put a goat side by side with the way you are behaving and you see that it's exactly the same true story i'm rounding up i know a gentleman that the mother cursed him and said until a rat stop stealing he will not stop stealing yes true story god is my witness he was a popular face that i knew this guy will come out of prison now as they are waving him signing in two weeks he's coming back again that prophecy secured the spirit of theft in his life comfortable the only thing that can set him free is the anointing you see the reason why we speak over people yes you speak over people to superimpose and veto the ordinances that have been communicated upon their lives. Listen, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that these are spiritual ordinances. Fatherhood and motherhood did not end with the Old Testament. In the New Testament, a man treats his wife bad and the Bible says his heavens will be closed. This is why many fathers are going through hard life in Nigeria. I'm telling you this. This attitude of treating mothers and treating women as if they are a piece of rag. You are a father here. Please apologize. I have great respect for men. I'm one. I've been one all my life. So I, I don't in any way downplay men. But I want to be sincere with you. The way you treat your wife, not a woman, your wife, will determine whether your heavens will be close or not so you can labor you finish insulting your wife call her stupid woman you and all your five useless children you are going for the business meeting they call you when you are almost there and say sir just go back it will work again you say what do you mean it will work i just prepared my paper the heavens you always know when the heavens are closed because a forest becomes a fruitful vine and becomes a wilderness depletion from as they say from grace to grass close heavens that's why the bible says until the spirit be poured upon us like rain from high then a wilderness will become a fruitful vine then a fruitful vine will be counted for a forest thank you hallelujah we're going to pray tonight and then i'm going to speak over your life I really believe in the power of prayer listen let me encourage you with these keys that i've shared with you 
I expect every wise young man, whether you are staying with your parents or not, or if, if both of your parents have gone to be with the Lord, you have spiritual parents, you have all kinds of representatives. If I were you, do something for your earthly parents that will provoke a blessing from them. As you are going home now, don't just go as a big man, big man, no money, close heavens. Go and meet your parents. Mommy, I don't have so much money, but I made pepper soup for you. I went round the city looking for bush meat that you like. I found it. Ah, really? My daughter, you mean bush meat? Okay, God bless you. Ah, mommy, no. I came with this one specially. Please pray for me. What kept you and daddy for 50 years? Let that grace come. Your mother will look and say, kneel down. That's it. I can guarantee you that prayer is not noise. He said, go and make me venison. That I may bless you. You don't bless without venison. The foolishness of young people. You stroll to anybody and they don't bless me. You think it works like that? Was, I, was it just because he was hungry? It's a principle. Honor your father and your mother. I'm telling you, this is some of us. This is what will break this joblessness, these problems. Some of us, you just need to go back home and say, Mommy, I'm sorry. For five years, I have given you a lot of headache. You people don't even like seeing me. But I want to tell you that I got connected to a ministry and God has changed my life. I just want you to speak over my life. I don't have much, but I came with 100 Naira recharge card. They may have 10,000 Naira in their phone, but that 100 Naira is what will open you up. They will say, kneel down. Let me tell you, whether your father is a believer or not, if he speaks to you, it's an office. It will open your destiny. Are we together? Mm. You go back home and you see the people in your community loitering their life. Christmas is when people die from bike as a result of drinking. They learn how to ride bike during Christmas <laughs> until they die from it. And you just sit and say, look, three or four friends, let's see what we can do. One day, small program somewhere at the back of one football field. Put one speaker and the rest. Organize something, even if it's for the children. Instead of our little children dancing all this devilish dance that they start spoiling the hearts of these small children, gather them. Let them, even if it's biscuit and sopo or something, you have done something noble for the kingdom. And then take God on Exodus chapter 23, verse 25. You shall obey and serve me. And I will bless your bread and water. I will take sickness far away from you. There will not be barrenness in your life and your days I will prolong. Lord, I served you during this break. I come for the blessings that follow service. Are you ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet. Hello, Himadonai, thy kingdom come, thy will be. spirit and seal the remaining part of this year seal the remaining part of this year go ahead and pray Pray. Lord, we seal 2017 in honor and glory. You crown our year with honor, and the mountains drop fatness for us. You crown our year with honor, the year of triumph. You crown it with honor. 
Counsel that I should experience for 2017 and is still lagging in my life. The remaining days that we have, I think we should have about 20, maybe about 16 more days. Am I right? 16 days is too much for God to do a fearful miracle. Open your mouth and release your faith. Move, oh God. Move, oh God. In 16 days. You can still confirm your word concerning my life. You are the miracle worker. You are the way maker. Make a way for me. You are the destiny changer. Give me a testimony. Give my family a breakthrough. Come on, pray for Ilonia. Those online follow us as we pray. Lord, I release my faith for ministry, for business, for career. You can still give me the job. You can still give me the promotion. I can still recover everything that was lost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want us to pray a very serious prayer right now. Most of us are going back maybe to spend a break with our loved ones or around. I'd like you to pray. When Jonah entered a boat, people started weeping and losing everything because one man in disobedience was in the boat. He made the boat unusually heavy and was about to capsize. But when the ark of God entered the house of a man called Obed Edom, without prayer in 90 days, three months, everything changed. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I am a living tabernacle. As I go home or wherever it is that I'll be going to, I represent your possibilities. I represent the heart of God. Go ahead and pray. I go home to smash the works of darkness. Every activity of divination, every activity of darkness over my loved ones in the name of Jesus as I step my feet I decree and I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost the heavens are open unto me In the name of Jesus, I challenge every force. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't be tired of praying. I want us to challenge three demonic forces over our family. Listen. One is the spirit of sickness and infirmity. Two, the spirit of poverty and hardship. Three, the spirit of death. Lift your voice and curse them. Lift your voice and curse them. In the name of Jesus, I represent the government of heaven over my life and my family. I command the spirit of death. Take your hands off my loved ones. There will be no sound of mourning. In the name of Jesus, pray. 
I come against necromancy. I come against manipulations of the consolations to destroy the life of any one of my loved ones. They are covered. I lift the standard of the blood. I lift the standard of the blood. Shake it, take it, take it, take I lift the standard of the blood. No death, not by accident, not by terrorism, not by plane crash. I cause sickness, I cause infirmity, I cause sickness. We cause cancer, we cause arthritis, we cause hepatitis, we cause every killer disease. Every terminal disease, take your hands of our loved ones. We cause the spirits of poverty and hardship, stealing resources from our loved ones, causing conflict in homes. Are you ready to pray? I'd like you to program favor that as I step out all through from now till January when I come back is going to be favor whether you have an uncle or not financial favor all kinds of open doors open your mouth and declare it create it I command favor in the name of Jesus I call for the help us for my family help us for my destiny Lord I receive I receive I receive all kinds of favor all kinds of favor favor men are rising men are rising in the name of Jesus favor hallelujah listen I want you to believe me we are rounding up but you see not many people in this life have truly encountered favor. Favor is an experience that happens once, but the result continues without stop. We are going to pray this prayer again. Listen, the hardship in many of our families, even salary, will not cure it. Is that true? There are some of us now, if you get a job, and you are giving your loved ones three three hundred thousand per month even after five years it will not solve the problem 15 people in the house only one person is working is earning twenty thousand that's a cost when i say favor i'm not saying look at your employer to give you one bag of rice or one of your rich uncle in america take your mind away from any man don't add faces your own is to just create with your words are you ready to pray for me and for my family lord surprise us surprise us before december 31st lord do something that has not been done a major dimension of favor pray no matter what kind you have seen provoke another provoke another in the name of Jesus I create it I call it for I call it for in my life I call it for in this ministry I call it for for my loved ones I call it for strange favor between now and 31st December strange favor 
Hallelujah. We'll soon round up. I'd like you to pray. Listen. One of the major reasons why there is trouble in our homes is because someone there has not given his life to Christ and therefore does not subscribe to the value system of the kingdom. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It is terrible to have someone in a family that does is, has not given his life to Christ or is not interested in being passionate especially if they have authority over you because they will force you to stay in their mode you pray for 30 minutes they say are you the first to be born again i have been born again i'd like you to pray two things lord massive encounters i'd like you to pray for your loved ones that don't know jesus lord this is this is the season they must encounter jesus lift your voice and pray I pray for my brother, I pray for my sister, I pray for my father, I pray for my mother, I pray for my uncle, I pray for my step siblings. Pray, pray. Lord, we are tired of the challenges that their lack of encountering Christ is bringing to us. Financial troubles, spiritual troubles, they continue to become doorways and portals through which darkness comes in to destroy and invade. Give them an encounter. Give them visions. Give them dreams. In the name of Jesus, break their pride, oh God. Give them solid encounters. Encounters with your power. Change them, change them, change them. Some of them have vowed that they will never give their life to Christ. I like you to pray and say, Lord, in your majesty, prove them wrong. Prove them wrong. Hallelujah. One last prayer and then we are done for tonight. Listen. All these prayer points I'm giving you, when you go back, pray them. Especially this prayer of salvation. I can tell you this. With the little experience I have counseling families, 90% of the problem is that there is someone who is comfortably a gateway for Satan to destroy people. Notice how Satan does it. In every family, he must search for somebody. One bad boy, one bad girl, or maybe our fathers, our mothers, everyone tries to press into God. You just hear that police are calling you. Go to the police station. They will tell you they've caught your brother stealing a laptop. The bill is 400000 And before you know it, the money you have saved, that's a devourer. All this stealing you see young people do especially all these young guys steal something shamefully come and put their parents in trouble the money that should be the school fees of five people you have to take it and go and settle police is the devil what about the young boys that have not reached age of driving they smuggle out a car and go somewhere an expensive car they just bought with their friends get drunk and smash the car these are all the schemings of darkness. Many parents today are almost dying of depression because of the stubbornness of their children. A lady jumps the fence and disappears one week. Nobody has seen her. They are all afraid. They start contacting the police, paying money, and then she strolls in after eight days and says, why are you looking for me? It's the devil. A smart young gentleman about to graduate they will go and find him under the gutter because he went for a, a nonsense party Christmas party that is the birth of Jesus Christ drinks to stupor and the friends strip, strip him of phone and everything and they leave him on the ground they come and carry him in the morning arrest him in the police station and the whole family spends Christmas going to the station I like you to say the devil is a liar. I'm, I'm showing you these are the things in, in many families. Satan does not want to see everybody rising. You see a gentleman, the only graduate, and because he's a giver, 
a wicked accident will happen and just destroy both of his legs or one kind of devilish sickness where there will be chemotherapy or something that is eating over 70 to 100 thousand per week in six months it has dried the finances of the family he said i will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower you have to be watchmen when you are at home don't see things happen and join everybody cry you know what to do go and lock yourself and say lord this cannot continue to be quarrel between father and mother quarrel between husband and wife all these bad bad things the devil brings during this season a time of joy and merriment all of a sudden that spirit comes into our families fire on the mountain everybody's living like a stranger don't you see that is an attack i'm telling you so that when you go back home everybody used to run away but now you are the one who will move and say no way i put an end to this evil in the name of jesus lift your hands let me speak over your life in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the power of the holy spirit as you return back you return in the power of the spirit in the name of jesus christ any name and any identity the devil has given your family that is a mockery to redemption i stand here in the name of jesus and i declare that within this one month may the lord change your story i pray from the depth of my heart for any individual and any family that is called Ichabod, that the glory has departed. I declare that because of your going back, let there be a restoration of glory. Let there be a restoration of honor. Let there be a restoration of dignity. I heard the testimony of a woman, genuine testimony, her husband had died, died and gone to be with the Lord. And a spirit came to her in the dream and tried to molest her. And within two, three months, she, she was pregnant. She noticed she was pregnant from the realm of the spirit with a physical child. I don't know who made us so carnal that we think we will casually, please be careful. You watch TV and people trivialize the reality of the realm of the spirit. If you are a pastor here, listen to me. End time ministry is real warfare. You are not going to stand and cross your leg. And my church should keep growing just because you are reading a novel about church growth. No. It takes you subduing the powers that be. Is God speaking to someone tonight? Fathers here, you need to stand up and take charge. Every father is a priest. You are already ordained as a father, as a priest over your home. And you are not going to watch darkness come and sit down and say it does not matter. That's why men who are not born again and serious with God, it's a serious problem. You open your shop to sell and there is a pungency there is a sense of repulsion you have everything that should be bought and people leave your shop and go somewhere to queue no we wrestle not against flesh and blood please listen to me but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and the spiritual wickedness they don't reside in hell they are in the heavenlies I counseled a man of God, I think it was two or three years ago. The devil, I don't know, the devil uses his face to oppress his members. Like you have a church now, and then you will see my face. I will come with an axe in a dream or something and oppress you. Will you attend that church? And everybody started saying the man is a fake man. Truly, I don't know anything about him. But when I got to meet him, he said, Apostle, what is this? He said, I got born again in the present. I have a history. What is this thing? Everybody is saying I'm a fake man of God. I went to collect power that they see me in dreams. I said, that's it. The enemy has done this. The devil would divide best friends by using the face of a best friend to oppress someone. Then lead that best friend to a, a prophet who may not be fake, but is not spiritually accurate. And he will say, your friend is jealous and wants to kill you. Nonsense! 
listen to me these spirits are actors they can join you together they look for where trouble is and guide you like the holy spirit guides you in all truth the devil can guide you in all trouble police is about to arrest a thief you, you find out that you are you are passionate about leaving home to go there you were minding your business but now you just get somewhere and they arrest all of you it's not normal it's not normal it's not normal we need miracles so we need real divine interventions we need the hand of god to come upon our lives we need the grace of god you are in your office with all kinds of people listen one of the things we have to learn is that not everybody is born again i think we are used to the fact that we are all born again around a circle so because of that you believe that the same way in your office everyone is born again let me tell you there are people who are fraternized with darkness to a realm and a level that except you are powerful indeed they will not only destroy you they will destroy you slowly hallelujah i think he was here i don't know which month i hope maybe the family may even be here they brought for me a medical student the final year last session the lady just became mad is it because of reading is she the first to go to school it's a spirit a woman labors on her daughter my brothers and my sisters and just when this woman is about to reap the reward of her labor have you not heard of people who graduated on their way going back home to celebrate a bike comes out from nowhere there is no bike that comes out from nowhere thou shall not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day not the noisome pestilence well you can choose to believe what i'm telling you or you can choose to allow time proof to you that this life does not joke if jesus himself got up early in the morning to pray and put everything in order he says knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish their dominion upon the earth thereof i've shared with you how many times i'm i want to take a trip and somebody genuine prophet genuine some of them are my friends and send me a text and say apostle be careful i saw an accident i saw this that is the plan of the devil but the ability to know his plan and conquer it is where victory comes from listen to me it is selfish to forget about your family and forget the let me tell you this you know esther was going to make a mistake the same mistake of Vashti, Esther was about to make it. She was about to forget her people and the purpose for which she went to the palace. And Mordecai said, don't think that when they are done with us, you will be spared. Sometimes when the devil wants to destroy you, he will leave the most powerful person to continue while he destroys every other person. Do you know that their going down will affect you spiritually? Tonight we came for serious business. I vowed a vow that I'm not going to waste the time of any of God's people. No. This, this, this ministry is not a museum. This is the place where we dislodge darkness. You, you have to return with a testimony. A woman called me one time she had this son whether he joined friends or so and went somewhere I don't know what he went to go and do this young boy and maybe about 10 or 11 started hearing voices physical voices like word of knowledge sometimes they can tell him kill yourself or pour hot water you know you you know that is of the devil when the instruction does not carry the life of God God will never ask you to pour hot water on your body how does it glorify Jesus the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And this boy continued to do all these kinds of things. And I told her, I said, Mama, thank God you brought this boy. This boy would die for nothing one day. Hell is rearming itself 
to make sure there is an onslaught an assault against the body of christ and many times we're just crossing our legs listen i need you to know i've taught you about warfare we teach warfare correctly we are not people who fight from a standpoint of foolishness we are standing from a standpoint of victory but that establishment you must do it otherwise victory will not be automatic Hebrews chapter 2 it says but we do not yet see all things under his feet please let me say this respectfully be careful who you listen to and be careful the content of the spiritual information you are giving just because people are sincere may not mean their communications are balanced and accurate listen to what i'm telling you many people have become casualties of imbalanced spiritual communications jesus told us everywhere in his crusade demons came they were not afraid of Jesus' own crusade. Demons, they followed people. They didn't wait outside and enter later on. They came. Imagine Jesus in a crusade. Praise the Lord. The people shouted hallelujah. And the demons were still in them. And they did not go. When the word is not engaged, it does not have any power to do anything. A spirit can sit down. The same way some of you are sitting quietly now. As sincere and innocent as you are. In the next few minutes, you'll be surprised what will be happening in your own life. And then you will see doors that have been closed opening like this. Then you will know that these doors were not closed by mistake and will not be opened by mistake. Everything good comes to everybody except you. The moment is your turn, something terrible happens. A gentleman just sees you and say beautiful lady can I go and see your parents and that's the end of it his business goes down his life goes down everything crashes until he leaves you then he goes back up do you believe what I'm teaching you <laughs> so while it is true that it's the Holy Spirit that ultimately creates conviction the manifestation of the miraculous in our lives and in the church you know when i came down you need to see the multitudes of people outside there are people sitting on the soccer way here my brothers and my sisters listen you went to school do you think human beings are stupid do you think someone will transport himself from another nation or another state some of you have not eaten since you came you came straight to sit down is god so wicked to sit down and allow you carry your trouble and go back oh not koinonia i welcome you to a place where god has given us the keys to deal with everything that is not of god i saw so many people standing outside the overflow by the roadside and compassion just gripped my heart i said imagine if i were one of these people and they were happily standing they were not complaining they just knew that if I may but touch the hem of his garment. My brothers and my sisters, let me tell you, forgive me if it sounds proud, but God has given us something. Let me tell you sincerely. We, we make bold and we ask the world to come and receive because he has given us something. I told you last week, you only knock a door that you don't have the key. When you have a key, you, don't, you stop knocking, you open that's the same way your destiny will be open the Lord declared prophetically that this is a year of extraordinary fruitfulness so in a meeting like this if I were you my heart is stayed on that word listen let me tell you please listen you see me teaching passionately we are going to pray when I teach like this huh, I don't teach as a preacher I come with my heart full of a burden are you get what I'm saying I come sincerely with my heart full of a burden because I love God but I love his people too my greatest satisfaction is not my personal progress is seeing the hand of God made manifest in your life when instructions are given when these spiritual things are given 
you must open your heart to believe them you see the the gospel works with the simplicity of childlike faith sometimes many of us carry this trado african pride and that's what stops us from receiving god wants to step in and touch you and you are wondering will god really touch me you know my peculiar problem you know the name are you the first to be in trouble God knows how to deliver the righteous from trouble. Let me tell you this. I don't care what the situation is, but I want us to agree that this God of heaven, uh, the king of the universe, that he will arise for you tonight. You see, let me tell you this. My prayer this year, when I was fasting and praying this year, I prayed a prayer. I said, Lord, some people don't know what a testimony is. Give them one. They only know how other people's testimonies. The Lord did this for this, but they have never had a testimony themselves. The day you have a real testimony yourself, it will humble you. You wouldn't know whether to stand or to kneel down. That's what I'm praying for you for today. A testimony. testimony when the hand of God comes in a meeting and upon a man you see let me tell you this the supernatural is not just falling down and roll you can fall down and roll from left to right and stand up and go back and not testify the proof that God came is the testimony that follows the testimony the testimony of Jesus the testimony of Jesus apostle i came here barren march miracle service by april miracle service i'm one month pregnant that's a testimony listen come david down when the devil oppresses your life destroys everything about you he uses men as a canvas to write a letter to god that your dominion and your royalty is still being contested with oppression is a letter sent through men to God the highest of God's creation the devil writes upon your life I will destroy the family and I will make sure everyone begs like you send a um, a chat send and then a miracle is God's reply that God writes through you and says in spite of this I am still on the throne It's true. I believe in miracles. I honestly and truthfully believe in miracles. I believe in principles. I believe in mysteries. But I believe in divine intervention. My brothers and my sisters, God can shorten a man's journey. What then is the excellency of his mercy? Listen. God is a God of process. I agree. Listen carefully. God is a God of principles. I agree. He will not excuse laziness and he will not excuse spiritual laxity. But let me tell you, when blind Bartimio said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. The mercy of God can shorten the journey of a man. If you get born again at age 40, do you know how long it takes to know God? genuinely know God you don't read your Bible in two months and know God but there's something the Spirit of God can do and give you a solid encounter that in six months you have caught up with the spiritual level of more than five years how about restoration your parents started building from 1999 till today it has stopped at Lintel level right there you went to school and said i'm going to pay it and finish everything the day you said you pay it you almost died i made a vow with my life that i would believe this word and i will engage it life is too risky to be careless with spiritual laws engage it don't wait until the devil kills your life and your children before you know many believers learn too late let me say this and thank god for his mercy you will receive but do you know there are some of you the lord spoke to you about coming here since last year you've been arguing and giving reasons and excuses your situation would not have been that bad 
but thank god because although lazarus was three days dead jesus is still the resurrection and the life not only the healer when i prayed i told the lord i said please lord give people a testimony real testimonies i was blind now i see god did something in three weeks to my finances everybody see what god can do god transformed my family god turned me around and did something for me i don't doubt your love for god but there must be proofs of that love there must be proofs of that love somebody shout lord give me an evidence say lord give me an evidence I believe in proofs John chapter 4 and verse 48 I'll begin to pray shortly bless you 4 verse 48 he says and Jesus said unto him who was speaking here Jesus except ye see signs and wonders ye will not believe how true how true that there are so many people in your family until they see what the power of God does in your life they will never believe your God they think God is one of those things this is a charm this is this this is that and then God is one of them but the day like Dagon all those gods fall before the Almighty God and you return back with a solid evidence let me tell you that day like Pharaoh your loved ones who confess that this your God is God Are we together so i want you to be serious don't sit down and just look around and say ah who is going to receive let me clap for him no it's an insistence it's a desperation except you see miraculous signs you shall not believe luke chapter 5 we'll read the first 11 verses that miracles can help to create solid convictions Charles and Francis Hunter powerful evangelists they've gone to be with the Lord now they wrote a book that a miracle is worth a thousand words I believe them I believe them the world is tired of our noise and our stories they want to see a demonstration and a manifestation of the reality of the life and the power of God. It says, and it came to pass as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God. He stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Next verse, please. And saw two sheep standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. Uh -huh. We are reading to 11. And he entered into one of the sheep, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the sheep. Next verse. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets for a drought. Five. What happened? Simon answering said, Master, we have toiled all night. In other words, he said, Lord, look, you are not the first to pray for me. A man of God prayed for me in Zaria. Another man prayed in wherever. You know, so God is one of those things. You bless me. Oh, yeah, do it. Master, we have toiled all night. Not for a few hours, all night. Night vigil, looking for a fish. And did not catch even one it says nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net six and when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their next seven and they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other sheep that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships miracles can create relationships that you get a miracle and partners that were minding their business you can say come and join me who will not follow someone with results who will not let me tell you the bible talks about a wealthy man and um, how did he put it now a poor man that we even with much entreaties they will run away from him there are many people that come from where we come from and will pass us as if they don't know us because you represent shame and anything that looks like Ichabod, the departure of the glory, men will usually find a way to excuse it from. But the Bible says you will be called Beulah and Hephzibah. 
a delight and they came and filled both ships so that they began to sing verse 8 when simon peter saw this look at this this is what miracles do he fell down at jesus's knees saying depart from me i'm a sinful man was a sermon preached a serious miracle happened and that miracle created conviction the same way some of you have been laughing at men of god sincerely and laughing at everything that has to do with the power of god and by the time we'll be sharing the grace tonight you will stand and go back quietly not talking to anybody and say i've seen today i heard with my ears like job but i've seen with my eyes that god is real and his power is real his grace is real nine for he was this is what led to the repentance he was so men can be astonished to repentance that they look at your life and say promise when did this happen when did god lift you was it not last year together we were discussing and you tell him there is a name god is called the, the lifter of men the lifter of men let me tell you my brothers and my sisters run away from anybody who tell you results don't matter they do they do out of the abundance of the evidence of the workings of god in your life the nations will bow to your god they will never bow to you just because you are talking man of god hear me no results you have mp pews there's there's no way around it there must be an evidence a serious evidence when john questioned the messiahship of jesus he didn't answer with a statement he said go and tell john what you have seen the blind see the deaf hear the dead are raised and the gospel is preached to the meek and then he says blessed is he that is not offended so the moment there are no miracles the messiahship of the christ is questioned john himself the one who ordained jesus said go and ask him is he the messiah miracles confirm that jesus is the messiah god is not a herbalist he's not a herbalist that is ahead of other herbalists no wherefore god had so highly exalted him and given him a name there are people who have names politicians have names businessmen have names. captains of industry gatekeepers of mountains have names but my brothers and my sisters there is a name it says there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved and it's in that name tonight that we will wreak havoc in the kingdom of darkness the miraculous manifests the glory of god and causes people to not only believe god but to trust god john chapter 2 and verse 11 the first miracle of jesus what we call the miracle at the wedding of the cana of galilee he turned water to wine the bible says this beginning of miracles this beginning of not this beginning of sermons not this beginning of discussions this beginning of miracles did jesus in cana of galilee and manifested forth his glory and the disciples believed on him believed on him we believe in the god that heals and saves and delivers that's why we kept the seats for you that's why we we knew you would come because the hand of god will bring you and we knew you would not be disappointed brothers and sisters there is a god in heaven god is not a herbalist don't let your pain demean him he is still the king of the universe the whole world lieth in wickedness acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and he went about doing good 
it takes the manifestation of the power of god to do good and healing all day that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him for god was with him for god was with him we're going to pray you have to convince yourself it's going to be a quick walk and we're going to cry to god and say lord whatever i carried from my house whatever i carried from my place of work that i brought before you it should not return back with me it should be clear and evident that i met the lord jesus christ it should be clear and evident right where you are sitting you will soon stand up but right where you are sitting i'd like you to talk to the lord please be serious and be desperate lord i have come to you i've come to you i've come to you i've come to you my life must be changed my finances must be changed my destiny must be changed lord i've come to you as a pastor i've come to you as a prophet as an apostle there has to be greater oil upon my life Lord, I hear you are a restorer. Restore me. Online, please make sure you are praying. Those outside, make sure you are praying. There is a God that answers prayer. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, it says we were like them that dream, and our mouths were filled with laughter, and said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for them. It says the Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. Turn again our captivity. There is a God that can turn around the captivity of men. Pray. Doesn't matter where you are seated, doesn't matter where you are connecting from. The power of God is able to save to the uttermost. Shalabarada Katos. Father, I'm praying that infirmity in my body must leave this night. That financial situation must die this night. That oppression that has kept my family down. Did the Bible not say this is a victory that overcometh the world, even our faith? A miracle walker, God is a glorious God, God is a miracle walker, God is a glorious
You're a miracle shortly and I'll begin to minister by the Spirit your own assignment is to receive you have come let me tell you something there is enough grace to solve whatever challenge it is that has plagued you yours is to believe in the power of God it says if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God if you will believe you will see the glory of God. If you will believe, you will see the glory of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. A lady, the power of God is going to come upon a lady outside. Please carry her and bring her now. There is a lady I'm seeing. I just saw light from in here. Write the power of God upon that lady. Please bring her. Please bring her. And then bring the someone on this road. I'm seeing like, like a smoke just going round. And it's like it's locating someone. The power of God is going to come on someone. Please pick the person and bring the person out. You reign. You reign. Hello. outside I crush the hand of captivity over your life in the name of Jesus Christ I crush the hand of captivity over your family in the name of Jesus I saw a lot of oppression over the life of this lady and in the name of Jesus we silence the voice of wickedness we silence the voice of wickedness hold on please the Lord is showing me something right now. I saw this while I ministered in Abel Kuta. I started seeing snakes on the ground. Snakes on the ground. And that's what I'm seeing right now. And this is, this is the manifestation of a spirit. And there are many families that are under this yoke. Whether you believe it or not, just let me minister to you. I'm declaring right now, the power of God is going to start coming on people that represent those families. Bring them out. You are not shouting anything. You are not saying anything. Bring them out. I'm speaking by the Spirit. The Word of God has been declared. There are families. I'm seeing serpents, snakes, snakes. Inside and outside, bring them. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. And the captives of the mighty, by the fire of the Holy Spirit, I judge those spirits wherever you are, represented in anyone here, represented in anyone here, I speak by the hand of God. You reign, you reign, hello, King. Bring them out. I'm still on that case. The power of God is still locating people. I'm seeing snakes. Na 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 na
In the name of Jesus, I'm still praying. We are not doing too many things tonight. We are going to the root of many people's challenges. I'm saying it again. There are still spirits. And I speak by the anointing of the Spirit of God. Wherever they are, overflow one, two, three, across the road. I'm declaring judgment, judgment upon those spirits. The fire of God is coming upon you right now. Whether you are standing for yourself or for your family, bring them out. There is no escape for when his voice comes, they come out from their hiding place. Hallelujah. Now listen, there are people, I'm seeing something that looks like a knife being inserted in people and I'm seeing people beginning to run, just run. When you see people doing that, hold them and bring them. The Lord is bringing deliverance. That one is not speed. This one is not the prayer for speed. I'm just telling you as the Lord is showing me. Right now I decree and declare. I don't know those that the Lord is cutting them free from every kind of diabolism. But I stretch my hands by the Spirit. I command judgment on every force. Judgment on every power. In the name of Jesus Christ. The hand of God is coming upon them. You will begin to see them run around. Just running. It's, it's, it's not a, a making of their own. It's by the power of the Holy Ghost. Bring them out. My help has come. Oh, 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 oh. My help has come. Oh, 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 oh. My help has come. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, Hallelujah. The Lord is giving me an instruction right now. Now we are ready to shout. Listen. The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing what looks like a grave. And the Lord is saying he's delivering families from the power of the grave. In the name of Jesus Christ and at the count of three, any family, whether territorially or by whatever connection, is tied to the spirit of the grave i'm declaring at the count of three as you shout jesus the power of god is setting you free one two three the spirit of the grave the spirit of the grave the spirit of the grave i cost you by the god of heaven the spirit of the grave I curse you by the God of heaven. Just follow me this night. Now, I'm praying for all those in front. They came out because the Lord showed something. I declare by the power of God that the legal access of darkness over your life is broken and at the count of three i speak to these spirits release everything you have taken from these families one two go 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 out of their lives out of their destinies out of their lives out of their destinies 
I command a release. I command a release. I command a release. Release breakthroughs. Release open doors. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Please just pay attention and let God help you. You came here tonight to receive. Listen to me. The Lord is ministering to me that there are people you dare not go to bed. Someone must come in your sleep and try to sleep with you. Or it may happen once in a while. This is a strange oppression of darkness. And I declare, I'm praying right now. I'm seeing fire all over this place. Because there are many people. That is the root cause of many oppressions in your life. At the count of three, you will shout that name again. That is above every other name. And some of you will feel something leaving you immediately. I declare that all these spirits that molest the saints and manipulate dreams and visions at the count of three let there be emancipation one two get ready three i command those spirits go now strangers of the night strangers of the night help that gentleman strangers of the night Bring them out. Strangers of the night. I curse you by the God of heaven. Molesting the saints. Planting sicknesses in their bodies. Hello, Kim Madonna. a certain family here I'm seeing that they tied the family to the covenant of a stone something that has to do with a stone I don't know what that means and in what tribe but I'm seeing a covenant that has to do with being tied to a stone I don't know if it's for protection or for whatever but in the name of Jesus I'm praying right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that any fraternity with the elements of Christ let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. Help them, please. Let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. Fraternities with stones and elements and strange fires of the night. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. The mysteries behind the strange hardship of people. The mysteries behind the oppression of people. Oppression of families. Doors. Doors are opening. That's what I'm seeing in the spirit. Doors. Doors. Some of you will feel fire on your hands. Fire on your hands. Doors are opening two leaf gates in the spirit. Fire on your hand. You will know by the fire that comes to your hand. I'm seeing fire coming on people's hands. That's what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit. Doors opening. You must testify. Doors opening. Doors opening. Doors opening. Age long doors. Age long doors that have been closed for many years. I'm seeing an angel of the Lord stand just at the back of this young man. Please shift, my friend. These four ladies, one, two, three, four. I'm seeing an anointing on you people. One, two, three, four. 
I don't know what it is that God is taking out, but I'm seeing like chains being taken from your feet, chains being removed. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. I saw an angel stand there, chains being taken up from your feet. In the name of Jesus Christ, chains being taken from off your feet. Listen, let me explain something to you. This is not just some disorganized jamboree. God is turning the destinies of men up. You will see people return with testimonies because there are forces. Emmanuel. I'm hearing the name Emmanuel. Who is that? Emmanuel. Please don't make the place rowdy, Emmanuel. We're going to pray for the sick now. There are four of you I'm seeing here. You have the call of God upon your life, but there are strange altars that are holding you down. In the name of Jesus, I lose you now. I lose you by the force of the Spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I lose you. I release your ministry. Hear me. I'm speaking by the Spirit. I lose you. I release your ministry. I stand by this apostolic anointing. I lose you. If I be called of God, I lose you. I lose you from these forces. I lose you from these yokes. In the name of Jesus Christ. There are men that can be alive, let me tell you, but they are dead in the spirit. Emmanuel, I'm praying. We don't have time to minister individuals, individually, but I'm praying for you. The Lord is breaking delay from four of the families with Emmanuel. No, no, once I mention your case, the power of God is coming upon you. You will know it's your case. I stretch my hands now among the Emmanuels and the people delay 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 there is an anointing coming now is crushing that spirit just because I'm praying for Emmanuel does not mean it will not come upon you in the name of Jesus delay delay God is visiting delay broken by the Spirit of God Please help them so they don't injure themselves. He came to set the captives free. To set the captives free. Hold on. This young lady, lift your hands. This, this, yes, you. Lift your hands. I'm stretching my hands towards you. I don't know what it is that I saw, but I saw something like smoke. The other one, the smaller one with white. Yes. I just saw something like smoke coming out of you. And the Lord is saying this is oppression for many years. That has something to do with your abdominal region. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, let that oppression go. Let it leave you. Let it go. Let it leave you right now. In the name of Jesus there is a woman now i'm going to pray for people generally but i don't know how we'll do this there is a barren woman in overflow three barren woman trusting god for the fruit of the womb please if if you can allow the woman to run and come god is instructing me to lay my hands on her because it's time for her to carry her child overflow three please let her run and come Ya bone na kao Sujata ne na kao Sirkin salam Sirkin abjana Ya bone na kao Maureen, 
Maureen. I'm hearing a name, Maureen. 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 What is your name? Lift your hands. Where are you from? Shout Jesus loud as you can. Jesus! Let the power of witchcraft over your life be broken. My dear, look at me. Look at me. Shout Jesus. Jesus! I crush that spirit right now in the name of Jesus. And the man you see in your dream, in the name of Jesus, may you never see that man again. Please make sure you, they don't, why is mama here? Is she Maureen? This woman, I, I'll pray for you. That woman, come madam. Is that your daughter? Come madam. Where are you coming from ma? Let her come. Sir? Where are you coming from? I'm from area C. Area I'm C? No, I'm, I'm going to pray for you. Mama, you are a sincere woman. But if I did not pray for you, huh? It's a bike that will kill you from the market in an accident. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing this woman with a leather of potato and a bike man just comes to jam her together with a truck and they just say survive by that the woman is dead. I'm not a prophet of doom, mama. Please don't be afraid. In the name of Jesus Christ, hold my hands. I extend your life by the power of the Holy Spirit that the plague of death. See, let me prophesy upon someone here anyone here that the hand of death is upon you to see that you will not see the end of this year i'm praying by the spirit now i'm praying by the spirit and in the name of jesus anyone that the spirit of death is haunting anyone being haunted by the spirit of death i command that it is crushed now in jesus name what is your name my dear Maureen, come. You will look at a beautiful lady like this. But in the realm of the spirit, I'm seeing a human being but no face. No face like this. I'm just seeing a blank face like this. Let me tell you what this means. It's a yoke of bad luck. That people stand and cannot bless you. You have what it takes to be blessed and rewarded. The lady on yellow, lift your hands. There's the call of God upon your life. There is a prophetic grace that is upon you. And the Lord is saying you are stepping into it right now. I stretch my hands to you. Right now in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bring you into that grace. I'm still praying for her. In the name of Jesus I declare. I'm seeing fire coming upon you right now. And that fire will unlock a dimension of the prophetic. In the name of Jesus Christ. bad luck listen i'm going to hold her but a different person is the one that will receive before i pray for her this is just allow me do my my mad thing hold my hand in the name of jesus i'm not praying for her i'm praying for someone now by the spirit of the lord but the lord is saying i should hold her as i pray for the person lord in the name of jesus this yoke of bad luck i'm speaking now please help them this yoke of bad luck by the power of the Holy Spirit where good things don't seem to happen to you in the name of Jesus let it be broken now 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 now let me pray for you be free by the anointing of the Holy Spirit I take away this that I'm seeing and in the name of Jesus, you have an identity in the spirit that brings honor, that brings grace and dignity. In Jesus' name I pray. Where are these ones? We're going to pray for the sick. Your name is Maureen? Are you married? You are married? Yes, sir. But you don't have a child? Yes, sir. From Overflow 3? Yes, sir. Where's your husband? not here it's not but you're married yes sir. come and stand here and watch the god of wonders i don't know you madam from overflow three you are from overflow three you are trusting god for the fruit of the womb why did you come your name is maureen 
What do you do, madam? Hold on. I'm a businesswoman. You're a businesswoman. Where? I used to sell at uh, young, um, Random Kanu. But right now, the business is... Scattered. Do you know why I'm asking you? No. I must pray for you. Because this thing is not only you. There is nobody doing well in your family. Your entire family. This is what I'm saying. It's a spirit. Huh? Except you open up something and miss. Even physical money used to get missing from you. You will keep money and count it. And found, find out that it's not what you kept. Is that true? If I'm lying, just say I'm lying. Where are you from? I'm from Enugu. Anambra state. I'm seeing the map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the state Anambra. I'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state now. I'm seeing deliverance coming for people from that state. Anyone, usually when God shows me this, anybody who is from that state connected by blood, the power of God begins to come upon them to bring deliverance. It's a sign and a wonder. I'm declaring right now in the name of Jesus that anyone who is from that state and that region and there is any force and yoke that is fighting you be free right now in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus please help them be free in the name of Jesus Anambra state be free in the name of Jesus I'm still seeing the map in my vision be free in the name of Jesus my friend that young man holding his hands shout Jesus from where you are the yoke is broken I cast it out of your life forever in the name of Jesus Christ madam I need to pray for you don't feel bad look at me you insulted a woman some years ago and the woman told you it will not be well with you it was like a joke truly the thing followed you this is what God is showing me now I'm not a prophet of doom I'm going to pray for you I don't know if it, the woman annoyed you or what is it you insulted the woman and she stood and told you that it will not be well because what you were saying about her was not what she did hold my hands the Bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered let me tell you my brothers and my sisters the scourging tongues of men the scourging tongues of men except you know where you stand a cause causeless shall not stand but if there is a cause it will stand though it will stand are we together now I will pray where are your siblings madam hi this woman no oh. you are not here alone where are the rest call them just stand where you call what is their name educate quickly please and Victor. Educate, come. And and who? Victor, that is and my Victor. Son. Yes. Victor is not your brother. Victor is a small my boy. Son, yes. Where is he? He's Let him come. Because I'm seeing the boy, you are saying Victor is a little boy. Ah. Uh, are you married? Yes. You have a son? Yes. Your son's name too is Victor. Yes, he's the one I'm is the boy that you are talking yes. about you said your brother no hk is my brother then let the boy come son. as young as that boy is too if i don't pray for him he will start stealing eh? there are two boys small boys that will be delivered from this spirit no matter where you keep anything they must steal it we are not condemning people i hope you understand what i'm saying here god is delivering people to the pure all things are pure nobody is calling any family a bad family but this is a place where god is visiting people where is the person please come celebrate him as he comes you're welcome sir i will pray for you god is going to turn your family around this is a little boy my friend how are you come how old are you 11 years old you love jesus yes sir. i will pray for you how can a nice boy like this and the next thing start picking things do you know let me tell you these small children that steal are not thieves it's just that either by carelessness or lack of discernment 
it was not dealt with because most of what they steal they don't need it that's how you know it's a spirit are we together yes that's why it's important that parents lay hands on their children and speak and prophesy don't assume they will be spiritual by default my friend let me pray for you father thank you for this adorable young man and this guy has a great destiny you see this boy i'm looking at a star rising as i'm laying my hands on him this is what the lord is showing me in the name of jesus christ i pray for you you will be a great man by the power of the holy spirit hold this woman the anointing of the spirit is coming on her in the name of jesus christ sir what do you do a medical sales representative you are a medical sales representative medical sales representative can i pray for you you are a sincere person now eh? but this thing they are just forces that want to destroy your family i will pray for you huh april may june it will look like you held a charm the way god will turn your life around you believe it in the name of jesus may that grace come upon you madam come the power of god is coming upon you in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare this thing that i'm seeing tied to your waist i lose it right now by the power of the holy spirit be set free now in the name of jesus christ you are the one trusting god for a child come how long have you been married three years three years no child you too are you married five years five years four months no child child doctor said after two surgeries they said my husband cannot impregnate me he did surgery twice don't cry jesus is here huh you went through two surgeries where is your husband he's at home, he's at home. don't cry where are you from where are you coming from Graceland. you see th these are the things that sometimes worry my spirit imagine the kind of trouble that this family will go through sometimes we take some things for granted imagine the advices someone now will recommend and say go to a herbalist go and do this and don't cry my sister two surgeries you went through mm. my head now i'm seeing something being removed from your stomach look at what is happening to her yes she went through two surgeries In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that spirit that says your husband cannot impregnate you. In the name of Jesus, I set you free now. Madam, I set you free now. I'm praying for the rest, but I set you free now. Hold my hands, come. In the name of Jesus. I declare supernatural miracle for you now release this woman now as I'm praying for you I'm praying for your husband wherever he is according to the time of life may you return with your miracle children it's over in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God my dear let me why is this woman here you are married to madam no child how long four years and um, five months four years five months where are you coming from jigawa state from jigawa state please come oh dear God is dealing with these issues because he has declared that it's a year of extraordinary fruitfulness is fruitfulness from any dimension any dimension look at this woman look at these women crying I may never understand what it means for a woman to not be able to take in I think is the equivalent of a man not be able to provide for his family that you come back home and watch your wife and children and they say that they were hungry and you are clueless about where bread will come from my sister please don't cry who brought you here you came alone Sarah. Sarah. Huh? 
Oh dear. Put your hand on your stomach. Is she a Christian? She's, she's a Christian. Okay. It doesn't matter whether you are a Muslim or Christian. The Lord, everybody the Lord healed in the Old Testament. He healed them and gave them an opportunity to hand their lives over. You just act like this just to show honor and respect people. I will pray for you. There is a name that is above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon your womb. And I declare the embargo of barrenness, five years barrenness. Let it be broken right now. Look at this. Let it be broken right now. I'm seeing something being loose from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. And then I'm seeing you coughing. You are now beginning to cough. This is what I'm seeing. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing. But I'm seeing something come out of you. And you are coughing. Coughing something out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be gone now. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. What's your name? Blessing. Blessing. Where's your husband? He's not here. He's not here. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't care what the medical report is. We agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now. I decree and declare according to the time of life return with your child whatever needs to be corrected in this body now i correct it by the power ah, i'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach this is what i'm saying you will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach in the name of jesus christ let there be a look at what is happening to her a correction a correction of whatever is wrong in the name of jesus why are they here fruit of the womb uh, we are not praying at random we we'll pray madam i will pray for you where are you coming from huh nasarawa state nasarawa state are you alone no I'm you alone. came with who only me only you come just the woman i will pray for her we have to pray for the sick but how many of you have seen what god is doing here listen you see if you love the lord and you see god attacking In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord just showed me something now I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire and the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people I decree in the name of Jesus Christ father whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of Jesus by the mercy of God let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now, there be freedom now. I'm seeing a family of one two three four five six graduates nobody's employed six graduates you are all graduates nobody has a job who is that person six graduates please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out six graduates no job not one person has a job i want to pray for you you're the one for the fruit of the womb huh i have to pray for you i'm seeing something in your stomach have you gone to the hospital you've spoken with a doctor don't be embarrassed I'm seeing something growing in your stomach and this is not a baby I will pray for you because if I don't pray for you you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the Lord is showing me and I'm going to pray for you where are you coming from madam Kano. Kano. is your husband here is your husband here yes where is he? Husband, sir, please come. There's Daddy something the Lord wants to do in your family. Don't worry, he's, he's here, he's coming. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming. God bless you. I want to pray for you. You came from Kano too? You came from Kano too, sir? 
I'm going to pray for you. Thing come out of you. Opportunity to hand their lives. Opportunity to hand their lives over. You just act like this just to show honor and respect people. I will pray for you. There is a name that is above every other name. And in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands upon your womb. And I declare the embargo of barrenness, five years barrenness. Let it be broken right now. Look at this. Let it be broken right now. I'm seeing something being loose from your stomach. This is what I'm seeing. And then I'm seeing you coughing. You are now beginning to cough. This is what I'm seeing. I don't know what it is that I'm seeing. But I'm seeing something come out of you. And you are coughing. Coughing something out. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let it be gone now. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. Let it be gone forever. My dear, put your hand on your stomach. What's your name? Blessing. Blessing. Where's your husband? He's not here. He's not here. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I don't care what the medical report is. We agree as a family of faith that this our dear sister carries her miracle child now. I decree and declare according to the time of life return with your child whatever needs to be corrected in this body now i correct it by the power ah, i'm seeing something like fire burning already on your stomach this is what i'm saying you will feel it now physically like fire on your stomach in the name of jesus christ let there be a look at what is happening to her a correction a correction of whatever is wrong in the name of jesus why are they here fruit of the womb uh, we are not praying at random we we'll pray madam i will pray for you where are you coming from huh nasarawa state nasarawa state are you alone no I'm you came with who only me only you come just the woman i will pray for her we have to pray for the sick but how many of you have seen what god is doing here listen you see if you love the lord and you see god attacking In the name of Jesus Christ the Lord just showed me something now I'm seeing the head of a human being on top of something that looks like a shrine on fire and the Lord is telling me that this is one of the mysteries behind the captivity of many people I decree in the name of Jesus Christ father whatever has had to do with blood that is responsible for the bewitchment and the plague that comes upon people in the name of jesus by the mercy of god let there be freedom now let there be freedom now let there be freedom now, there be freedom now. i'm seeing a family of one two three four five six graduates nobody's employed six graduates you are all graduates nobody has a job who is that person six graduates please listen to the instruction so that you don't just jump out six graduates no job not one person has a job i want to pray for you you're the one for the fruit of the womb huh i have to pray for you i'm seeing something in your stomach have you gone to the hospital you've spoken with a doctor don't be embarrassed I'm seeing something growing in your stomach and this is not a baby I will pray for you because if I don't pray for you you will have to go through serious surgery to even allow the baby stay based on what the Lord is showing me and I'm going to pray for you where are you coming from madam Kano. Kano. is your husband here is your husband here yes where is he husband sir please come there's Daddy something the lord wants to do in your family don't worry he's, he's here he's coming thank you sir thank you for coming god bless you i want to pray for you you came from kano too you came from kano too sir i'm going to pray for you number one god is going to give you the fruit of the womb number two god is restoring your finances 
You hear what I'm saying? Amen. God is restoring your finances. Amen. This is a serious issue. As you are here coming now, the financial trouble you are into is only God that can bring you out. Amen. Is that true? God is going to help you. Madam, put your hand on your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ, why are they here? Six graduates, no job. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, by your mercy and by your grace, let there be a sign and a wonder in the life of this woman. Just keep her down. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, everything that is wrong be corrected now. In the name of Jesus, sir, please can you hold my hands? In the name of Jesus, I speak over your finances. There is a grace that can restore, and I release that grace upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Madam, let me talk to you, and then we'll pray for the sick. You are the, both of you, where are you coming from? You are here in Zaria? Yes. And you are, yes, I know your face. Six graduates, no job. Yes, sir. Including you? Yes, sir. Come. No. But there are six Nigeria people. Now. Yes. But there's no job for yes, them. Sir. Can we agree that God will give them a job? Yes, sir. And you too? Yes. Let's pray. Come. Hold my hands. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, there is an anointing that is coming upon you, eh? and is for the sake of your family. In the name that is above all names, I release this grace upon you, and I pray, let the embargo of joblessness be broken now. Even on both of you, I use you as a point of contact to pray now. Something is leaving this lady's hand, you. Something is leaving your hand. I curse that yoke now. In the name of Jesus, your hand is a symbol of your productivity. And I declare in the name of Jesus, let there be liberty. Liberty for all of you. Liberty. I open the doors of jobs. In Jesus' name I pray. Why is he here? You are a graduate. Six. From where, please? From Abuja. Abuja. Yes. You are a school of ministry student. Madam, let me talk to you. Where are you coming from? Natural State. Are you married? Bring the person that begins to laugh in the spirit. The hand of God is coming upon someone. The Bible says the shouts of joy and victory will not depart from the tents of the righteous please bring the person let's save time father i establish this victory over this lady's life the oppression over your life and your family is broken now and broken forever broken now and broken forever We don't have time our time is gone but the lord is showing me a very serious vision of a lady that entered a relationship with a gentleman and left him and the guy vowed i'm seeing this guy carry not you now i'm seeing this guy carry a photo and taking it to a herbalist in kaduna state hello kim matona whose name has been taken for any diabolic activity i stand by the hand of god whoever took it there judgment comes on them now whoever took it there judgment comes on them now whoever took it there judgment comes on them now Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now. I'm still praying. Whoever took it there, judgment comes on them now.
This is what the Lord showed me. Carry the name of the lady and kept it there. That number one, no decent man will ever come and ask her out. And number two, she will never give birth. This is what I'm seeing. Who shall say a thing and it will come to pass? That when God has not declared it so. I reverse every pronouncement over anyone here in the name of Jesus. I want to pray a prayer. Please forgive me for tonight's miracle service. The way God is taking us. I want to pray. Shade and doctor, please come. The Lord wants to end an old issue in your family. Please come. This is what the Lord is showing me. This thing I'm seeing is as old as more than 60, 70 years. The Lord is opening my eyes to see now. Please, I want to pray for you. Those under the anointing, help me. Please, I'm just using two of you as a point of contact. But I'm seeing a spirit. This is an ancient spirit. The way this thing works is that men rise. The moment they get to the zenith of anything they are doing, they must die. This is the spirit I'm seeing. Please listen. I'm not... I'm just using them and I'm ministering the way God is showing me. These are not the only families with this thing, but the Lord is saying I should deal with it now. Provided you have not gotten to the pinnacle, you no death will touch you. But the moment you touch that bar, you are going down. And the Lord wants to destroy it. Because God is using both of you to start a new program in the family. I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I will follow the lion. I will follow the lamb. I, I, I believe in the lion. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. Bring that little girl, as small as that girl you see is. This girl you are seeing is a deliverer of our family. As small as you are seeing this, this little girl. Because this girl stands as an altar of righteousness over her family. And as small as she is, the devil wants to kill her. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare, I use this, my dear daughter, as a point of contact. That everything that is not the planting of God, I scatter it now in the name of Jesus. May God use this, our precious daughter, and truly may she be the deliverer of our family. In the name of Jesus. A lady is going to start running because I'm about to pray over a spirit that is in her family. And that spirit is going to start driving her to run away. So I'm telling you in advance, you are going to see the person stand up to start running away. It's, it's not even this lady I'm talking about. This is somebody in the crowd. You will not even, you will not be in control of yourself. It's a spirit because I'm about to rebuke it right now. Mm. Father, I thank you for the Bonire family and by extension the various families. The altar that sits upon this family. Even the lawful captives, Kemarato Zakata, shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives, I break that yoke now. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood. That ancient yoke that brings down great men over this family be broken. I open up the door of increase. Rise to the zenith of your profession. I forbid the spirit of death. Once and for all. In a moment. In a twinkling of an eye. An issue that is age long. Let me tell you this. A mighty deliverance has happened to this family. This thing I'm telling you. Fought their grandparents. Fought their parents. And if not delivered now. Will still fight them.
if there's anyone here that this same spirit works in your family you rise to a position and crash down in the name of Jesus at the count of three let fire land upon such individuals and scatter that altar scatter that altar forever in the name of Jesus Christ it took words to establish the covenant that brought this family in trouble now I declare to you, a new order starts in your lineage. A new order starts in your family. Where children live long and they become successful. And that every embargo of witchcraft, once and for all, is broken in the name of Jesus. Madam, I can pray for you now. Where did you say you are from? Just, just keep her somewhere there or bring a chair and keep her. You are not from Nasarawa State. You stay in Nasarawa yes, State. Yes, Where yes. are you from? Eboin State. Eboin State. Eboin State. I want to pray for you. Am I wasting your time, please? One encounter with the power of God is enough to turn your life around. My friend, this man wearing um, you. Yes. Did you come alone? Who did you come with? Where is your wife? Come. It's time for God to change your life. Stand up. Stand up. Please stand up. Stand up. Where are you coming from? From campus, yes, sir. You are from campus, yes, sir. What do you do? I am lecturer in the university. You are a lecturer. Yes, sir. I want to pray for you. Ah. Sir, you are not supposed to be at this level now. You are a very brilliant man. You, but there, you are intelligent. I don't know you, all, but you are a brilliant man. It's Thank even you, too grace for you to be given a lecturing job. Yes, sir. It's because there is no way they could deny you. Yes, you are too exceptional. Yes, sir. And you are supposed to be abroad now. Yes, I don't know what has kept yes, you down. Sir. This is what I'm seeing in the spirit. You are not supposed to be here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But somebody carried your issue and put it under the table. You see, you see what we are talking about. That you carry a man's destiny see let me say it i'm praying to you from my heart that in the name of jesus whatever belongs to you and has been hijacked by the wicked hearts of men it must be released this night it must be released this night sir please stand up what's your department sorry sir Political science, can I pray for you? Yes, sir. You will know that there is a God in heaven. Amen. Amen. What do you do, my dear? I'm not doing anything. You are not doing anything? No, sir. Ah, I have to pray for you. Yes, sir. Ah, that trip abroad, you must go. Amen. Amen. Because there is an honor and there is a professor that God has destined that you will meet. Amen. And I'm going to pray. Do you believe what I'm saying? Yes, sir. In the name of Jesus Christ, sir, I pray for you. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I release you. And I release your destiny. Amen. Both for you and your wife. Amen. I decree and declare. Scale new heights in your profession. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. There is a friend in your life. And the Lord is telling me to tell you to be careful. There is a friend in your life. Be careful. I won't say more than that. Be careful. What God has joined, let no man put asunder. I'll stop there. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord honor you. In Jesus' name. Madam, you have been here for a while. Let's pray. What are you trusting God for? For marriage. Who came from Joss? Joss. Joss. Where did you come from? Madam, where did you come from? Bokos. Huh? Bokos. From Joss. Not state of origin, where you came from, that you left it and came. Huh? I want to pray for you. What do you do? I, I, I'm a secretary. You are what? I'm a secretary. You are a secretary? Yes, sir. Come, let me pray for you. I, one of these days, we'll just trust God and do a night vigil. 
honestly so that we can deal with this issue seriously you may think that time is being wasted until you see what god is turning around in your life all these people came from joss madam say in jesus name in jesus name i will not have what they call that pregnancy that they have to do um, no bridge is bridge or something like that this is what i'm saying I'm not pregnant. all done let me pray for you come you are sick it looks like pregnancy like it's breached this is what i'm saying the pregnancy that looks like it's that will open you up and carry something out where are you coming from Josh? what did they say is wrong with you um, multiple fibrosis no a man don't feel embarrassed can i talk to you a man used to come in a dream huh yes, and sleep with you yes, is that true yes, that's what brought this pregnancy I'm a man of God. Don't be af afraid. You, you heard the story I told you now. Yes, sir. Madam, if I'm lying, look at me before the whole world and say I'm a liar. That you go to bed and a man comes and all of a sudden this started coming. Of course, medically, you would think that, okay, you check it. There is nothing there. Yet the pregnancy will not go. How long has this thing been? Three years. Three years. Don't cry. Don't cry. Who did you come with? May this place remain a place of solutions. Was it not the fallen angels that met with the daughters of men and they became pregnant physically? And had strange go and listen to my teaching the mystery of the serpent and the woman my sister can I pray for you you believe in Jesus look at this adorable lady look at imagine a woman carrying this for three years is that pregnancy it does a human being stay three years in the stomach are you married of course imagine what this this means to her marital life put your hand there father in the name of jesus christ look at this look at what is happening to the woman in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare that every seed that has not been planted by god let it be uprooted in this body is it not written that every tree that has not been planted by my father it must be uprooted i uproot this right now in the name of jesus christ i uproot this right now in the name of jesus by a strange mystery may this thing begin to go down and disappear from this woman's body in the name of jesus christ just keep her down there madam let me pray for you what do you want the lord to do for you I'm believing him for a life partner. Life partner. Do you believe God can give you a life partner? Yes, sir. Do you love Jesus? I love Jesus. You are born again. Father, the Bible says male and female, he created them. She's not embarrassed. She's standing sincerely and telling you that I came so that God will bless me with a life partner. I lay my hands upon you and I decree and declare may god bring a responsible man to your life Amen. you will not marry a man that will make your yesterday better than your tomorrow Amen. in the name of jesus christ i declare it so and for all these people standing i pray for them may the lord himself bring miracles over their life Amen. in jesus name i pray i may not have time to minister to all of you one by one please forgive me huh coincidentally i'm going to just tomorrow I'll be in just Saturday, Sunday. I'm ministering in a conference. I'm excited. I'll be in House on the Rock at Rayfield. Saturday and Sunday. I'm in just. But let me pray for you. All of you who came all the way. My dear, look at me. You love Jesus? Yes, sir. With all your heart? Yes, sir. I drive the boy. That the devil wants to bring to your life say amen amen 
you you may not understand what i'm saying but let me repeat myself i drive i didn't say god drove him in the name of jesus christ as one who loves you well i drive any irresponsible boy that is coming in the name of prayer warrior to destroy your life amen in the name of jesus i'm amen. not looking down it is god's will that all men be saved but then i'm telling you that in the name of jesus christ everything that would destroy your destiny let it be far from you amen. by the power of the holy spirit amen. praise the lord for all of you i may not know why you came but let me pray for you in the name of jesus return with your testimony in the name of jesus return with your testimonies in the name just believe what i'm praying for you in the name of jesus return with your testimonies god bless you please go back to your seat my god can we still pray for the sick how many of you are trusting god for healing let me see your hands out there okay this is what is going to happen it's okay I'm, I'm going to pray for you 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 came you brought them okay i'm going to pray for you now you just relax now please because of time those under the anointing just leave them if there's no usher hold on a lady usher place your hand on that girl any lady usher release her now out in the name of jesus let it come to an end now and forever release her destiny release her family in the name of jesus christ let there be restoration let there be testimonies please this is how we are going to do it because our time is already gone we are going to do three things at the same time please listen number one you are going to be submitting your prayer requests number two those who are trusting god for healing in the various overflows please aside from those that i prayed for for barrenness if your reason of coming here is barrenness whether you are in overflow one two or three i want you to come to overflow one i want to pray for you myself aside from that please you are trusting god for a healing miracle i want you to move to your various overflows so those at overflow one move to the front of your projector stand overflow two the same thing overflow three the same thing those by the roadside the roadside down to second equa join overflow two you can join overflow two please ushers protocol pr department coordinate yourself to help them please so that the people know what they are doing praise the lord those in here you can come you can come the lord bless you now there are going to be men and women of god scattered across these various places who are ministering under a corporate anointing make sure you are standing for healing please make sure you are standing for healing no 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 those for fruit of the womb come in please the main auditorium i want to lay hands on you by myself it doesn't matter what overflow you are if it is fruit of the womb please come the main auditorium i want to pray for you now please listen just a touch is enough you don't have to start explaining and telling the men of god this is a problem sometimes god can give them words if they don't don't worry just a touch and you will go back i want you to believe this that's why you came are we together while that is happening if you have your prayer request here you can just wave it and pass it let there be an usher okay um peace is here you can pass it let there be an usher or somebody please um the various departments coordinate yourself so that you are collecting this let's make it fast those online um you can use our social media platforms to submit your requests and we're going to pray on it right now please quickly quickly A Jimmy and a Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one a Jimmy and promise will go to overflow one um, pastor alpha and Benga will go to overflow three 
Overflow 3. Pastor Femi and Kenny and Ima go to Overflow 2. Also extend to those by the roadside. Extend to those by the roadside. Did you get... Let me pray for you, Pastor Lawrence. Come. I will pray for you and then you will join those at Overflow 3. In the name of Jesus Christ, grace for you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the anointing, let the grace of the Spirit come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Now, please, worship team, you give us songs of the Spirit while we are ministering. And as soon as hands are laid on you, you can go back rejoicing. Those who are seated, don't be careless. Be praying in the spirit because God is solving people's problems while you gather the prayer requests. If you are yet to submit yours, just wave it and there will be someone to reach you. In the name of Jesus. Father, we decree and declare that within the next 10 or so minutes that we have, do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus, do a quick walk in the life of your people. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Someone will fall under the anointing here. Once that happens, the power of God will start move to heal. Right here, those in front here. Okay, so I can start praying now. In the name of Jesus, be healed. In the name of Jesus Christ, be healed. Praise the Lord. Please, everyone stand. Say after me, in the name of Jesus. Whether you are inside or outside, Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that the next dimension of my life opens up now. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Please begin to pray. of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I like you to begin to declare that every request you have written here that by the grace of God this will be the last time you have to visit this issue please pray please pray our time is gone but let's make use of the time Sweet 
stretch your hands here and begin to decree and declare that in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, every request that I've written here by the God of heaven, let this be the last time. Shatakato sebregete kotosh, impratakato bregeteka. May the Lord arise and solve impossible situations. Arise in the name of Jesus. Are you praying? Father, that these Egyptians that I see today, I see them no more forever. The requests of those localized here and those who have posted their requests on our social media platforms, we declare intervention, we declare breakthrough, we declare increase. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, we declare and we agree as a family of faith that this request will turn into testimonies in your life. We declare that these requests turn into supernatural testimonies. The same way I am standing upon them, I decree you stand upon every situation that is represented here in the name of Jesus Christ. I know that they are still praying for a few people, but let me just pray the final prophetic blessing on you because our time is gone. He says, the sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. I decree and declare, every economic hardship that is bringing the saints to their knees and causing them to compromise, I declare that you are exempted from it now. Every prayerlessness represented in this place that the grace to pray seems to have gone down in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar anybody introduced by the devil into your life or your circle to destroy you I severe you from them right now in Jesus' name. I speak favor over your life. And I declare in the name of Jesus, walk in favor. 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 Therefore, God has exalted him and given him a name. That is above every other name. It says that at the mention of that name, every knee must bow. I declare, whatever must bow in your life from tonight, let it bow right now. Let me pray for you finally. And especially for those of us who are not within this city. If you traveled far and came, I'm praying for you now. In the name that is above all names, to all our visitors and all those who connect with us from far, that includes those from our social media platforms, I decree and declare, whatever the issue of concern is that brought you here, return with the answers now. Return with the answers now. You will not need to tell people you came here. There will be the radiance and the glory of the Spirit upon your life. I declare that every door that has refused to open, even as the Lord kept revealing here, I enforce it and we call that door open now. The new month is the fourth month of the year. The number four stands for balance. That means that whatever is left 
that must be shown in your life. You are blessed here, but not yet blessed here. You are blessed here, but not yet blessed here. I declare to you. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.